Good evening, ladies and gents, and welcome back to this week's GKP Live. Usual thing, guys. We'll be right back after this. Hey guy does you good mate yeah not bad thanks good man good man how's your week been then up to press it's not been too bad yeah hopefully we won't have any goldfish emergencies tonight <laughs> goldfish emergencies yes <laughs> like on day, dave's live the, the buggers started spawning <laughs> <laughs> have they not have they not actually spawned yet then I think it was the tail end of a spawn because they were chasing all the following day. I've tried and spawning. I can't get anything out of them. So I think I must have missed the first spawn and they must have ate it all. Oh, no. That's Never a mind. bit of a wound to make. You were hoping to get some out of them, weren't you? Uh, yeah, but they spawn every, about every two weeks. Once they, once they start, that, that's it. They just keep going. Oh, right. Sweet. So you've got a very good chance that you'll definitely get something from there anyway. Yeah. As you well, know, it what we're going to be up to tonight, does? Sorry? What we're going to be up to tonight? What we got? I have no idea. Should we wing <laughs> it again? <laughs> yeah, as usual. <laughs> Everybody thinks this show's planned. <laughs> yeah, not. <laughs> <laughs> not one bit. Well, I hope everybody has had a pleasant week up to press. We have got a fair few topics, and we've still got some topics that are left over from last week because we've... Uh, Ryan being on, we ended up not touching base on a lot of them, but it was a lot more interesting for not doing, I do believe. Myself, personally, I really enjoyed last week. Uh, the five Ps 
which is piss poor perf no piss what is it five p's preparation and performance is it planning and preparation prevents piss poor performance that's the one is that a mantra then <laughs> it's something like that yeah dave, dave knows all about the five p's don't you dave Preparation prevents piss poor performance. That's it. Uh, I would like to mention a quick one right at the beginning before we go any further. I would like to say a massive welcome to Bernard, uh, Bernard, who is part of the Volvo Club. Um, You've never and, guessed that. No, and, but the, see, the thing is, he, he is, he is, is, a, is a close dear friend and he is very new to the Volvo Club. So if there is anybody out there that could please help my friend Bernard with providing him with the Caravan Club's owner's hand guide on where he can pick up and which local clubs he can join up with, I'll quite happily pass them on to Bernard. I mean, Humberkoy, uh, Bernard, <laughs> at a later date. <laughs> he may be getting himself in the club, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, sorry, Rick. Missed you. Hang about. Whoop. Missed you there, mate. Sorry. Evening, mate. That fish is flipping nice. Do you like I like it. I yeah, mate. That is very nice. And they changed. I, yeah, I don't know because that wasn't one we'd seen before because it come out of a pond. Ooh. We haven't been. So the ones that we've been through are somewhere else. I can't remember where. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you, what, you can't remember where we put them back. No, well, no, 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 the bottom where the, where the polytunnels are, where we did all the grading, it was a third or second or third one in. Yeah, yeah, but they, they, yeah, they all come out of there for the winter, oh, so we right, next so down, they've all gone right. off to the, the fish houses. You don't want one of them, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's, uh, right. If anybody's wondering, it's uh, squashed them out of that snake back in. <laughs> <laughs> that now there's an idea. Maybe that one, the squash tomatoes, worthy of the polytunnel. You don't want one of them. I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it very much. But I doubt it very much. Right, we've got we've got a lot, quite a fair, quite a fair few topics, and a fair few which I still believe, Crafty, is quite relevant from last week, mate. So I'm going to kick off with these because one, this will help somebody in the. Somebody in the making, somebody already doing, and somebody in the improvement stage of the questions that are, well, it'll help you, it'll help Daz, it'll help Crafty. Like get answers to these these questions. Oh yeah. One hundred percent it will. Uh, I just need to find them. <laughs> Preparation <laughs> gas. Why are you looking? Look at this t-shirt, mate. Oh, let's have a look. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice. Is that a butterfly, Kai? Uh, it kind of is, mate. Oh, yeah. huh? Print and design. Uh, I've got the one for. Give me the one for Vince as well. <laughs> you know it's plain. It's plain crafty. Yeah, <laughs> mine's green. If it helps, oh, really. squares up from. I don't even own a Kai T-shirt. Do you see these? Well, we've got a low. Oh, is that a free T-shirt? Nice. Oh, check them out. What is it? Thank face you. flannels. Face flannel, <laughs> yeah? So you can oh, wash you your face on a kite. <laughs> that's, what, that's what you get from Japan for entering the All Japan Koi Show. As a gift. Okay, is it not posh toilet roll? <laughs> <laughs> right, well, one of the first questions which we did manage to touch on last week, which Rick missed a little bit of, was... Is the show scene important? And we heard a great deal about the show scene and how the show scene can be important to both importers, dealers, breeders alike, store owners and lot, everything, pretty much really. If you pick up a nice fish from Perfect Aquatics and it's good enough for the show scene, 100% that reflects upon the picking skills of the imports, especially if you're doing what like Crafty did. If you pick up a fish from, let's say, New Forest Koi, and you take it to a show scene, that would obviously be well suited for Rick because that would be stock he'd produce and brought out. Yeah. And then we've got the same kind of thing 
If you were an importer, what's this one say there? Is that a fly well, fish? I can't reach Japanese, mate. It's just oh, like no, squiggle, isn't it? <laughs> and then we've got the same thing, whereas if you were an importer of Japanese koi, and obviously you picked and selected a fish, but a customer or a client, he took it to a show scene, then that reflects well. But which pretty much we all touched on, or it was touched on last week. But as we've been asked, the remainder of these questions, because there was five in total, and I think we actually made one, missed one from Dave Pickstock. We might as well pick up on them, and then we'll run into what we've got for this evening from what everybody else has put in. So, it. yeah, definitely, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers for your honesty, mate. <laughs> um, first one was, is it important that a dealer has vit visited Japan or visits Japan to buy their own stuff? Is it important to you guys? If you think it's important that your supplier that you go to stock-wise to pick up and purchase your fish from has been to Japan or visited Japan to buy their own stock, is that important to you? Or are you happy with what they get sent if they just pick them up, you know, like for yourself, Rick? Are you, you've been, yeah, you think it's important as a, as a, a koi breeder, I think the the point is where the hobbyist is on the ladder of, and the same with the shows, isn't it? You, you've got the national show is, is the sort of pinnacle, and yes, they should all be supported. And I've got, yeah, I think it, I think whatever type of show, however it's done, is all beneficial. Um, but ninety percent of our customers have, have never set foot in a show. You know, they're they're fish keepers, pond keepers. Koi keepers, whatever, and it, yeah. everyone starts on the most people start on the journey. Goldfish koi or keeper koi, go and look at koi and go, "Oh, that's beautiful," but I'm never pound a pound for a fish. You know, ten pounds my limit. And next fish they buy fifty pounds a limit. Next fish they buy, and you work your way up. It's so no, they, they, you need dealers out there. You need you need the whole scope. Yeah. Otherwise, if, if every dealer is traveling to Japan hand picking good stuff. Every fish is going to be commanding a, a certain level of price because you're not going to go over there, pick fish and ship back fish that are 10 quid each. It just it's not, it doesn't make any sense, does it? So you've got, a, you've got to have the whole scope, and that's the point. So as you build, and I think every hobbyist, and not just hobbyist, every dealer, it, dealers start somewhere, and they, they go up the ladder. And there's, I could name 20 dealers that started with us and go up the ladder because we can't supply as they go up and they want their customers aren't want better fish so they go up a ladder and that's that's how it should be so if you're looking for you know a top end fish for 10 grand you're not going to come and see us you want to go and see probably one Me. of the dealers or whatever in the country that are going to be bringing in those fish yeah or crafty because he's, he's just gonna <laughs> but you know what I'm that's yeah, yeah it's, rally, it's, isn't it? It, it, it has a place doesn't it i think as you say there, and it's right. Everybody starts. You fit, the most people that go out, unless you, you know, unless you want to, if, if you get into it and you've got deep pockets and you think, right, I want a koi pond. I want it building and constructing, and I want to learn through the process. But I don't want nothing other than the best in my pond. There are those people out there that can afford to do that. And I mean, I wish I could. I'm jealous. How, how do they know <laughs> what's the best? If they've not been through it, you can go to a place and pay 10 well, grand for a fish. That's, that's the thing, isn't it? You, you, mm. You've got to take the advice that you get from your dealer or your supplier dealer. that what you're getting is the best. That's it, the whole it, point, isn't it? So you, it's a, the whole thing's a that For me, the whole thing's a learning curve, isn't it? And you, you should. It really if you've got deep you. pockets, yeah, you might start with a top spec pond and buy top fish, but you, you haven't learned. Oh, there what is a top fish, yeah, what a top fish is. You, you yeah. might think you've gone out there and bought the top fish, but the top fish is still somewhere else, and it's not quite as good as what you thought it was going to be until your knowledge and experience and tastes change. The same the shows, and every, I'd recommend everyone visit a show because no. there's some amazing fish to see, isn't there? That's the whole point yeah, of it. Is. 100%. The, the, the show, number of hobbies that show take fish to a show is is quite minuscule, and it's quite often the same the same people, isn't it? Because they've they've got the 
the yeah. knowledge, the skill, the understanding, all those bits to take fish to a show. So, yeah, I think it, it is the show scene is like, yeah, you sort of pinnacle, but you've got another pinnacle of people that aren't interested in shows that still want to have the top fish. Um, so it's, I think the whole, the whole hobby needs to be as broad as it possibly can. And the more yeah. broader, there's the more people you have in it. And the more people that are in it, you have some that want to climb the ladder and have better and better fish. Some people just want to put fish in their pond and never don't want to improve. They're just pets. They yeah. There, there, there is some people that would put fish with problems in the pond purposely. And by which I mean, you know, slightly misshapen pets or whatever. Because, yeah. 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 <laughs> some of us, that's like, ah, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> But, but to other people, it's, you know, give the fish a life, give the fish the chance, whatever. But you're right, mate. It, do, it does it does, go. It does go for up in tears, doesn't it? It is, it's, it is a ladder. Of and it, are you, yeah. is he ever really a top? Is he ever really a top level? Because I would imagine even the best breeders in the world are still producing, still changing and still developing, aren't they? So is the... Uh, yeah, but your idea of what you're trying to achieve changes. So you might be you might be dreaming of producing a good go sank your meat along. That's what you want to do, and suddenly you realise that you're not bored of it. But suddenly you want to produce something else, a single colour variety of a you know. It's as ever a breed, evolving. It always changes. You know, from our point of view, it's not so much what we want to do as breeders. It's what the market want to buy from us. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, I could I could try and go down a path and produce the best koi I can. But if I can't sell them and make any money, we're screwed, haven't we? Yeah. So if, if people want to come and buy a whole range of fish from us at the sort of 20 to 50 quid range, I can't argue with thousands of customers that want to buy that and say, no, no, you want to buy these. There comes a point where, I don't know. Yeah, I get, yeah, but I get, what, you, I get what you mean. If you, let's say, for example, you went into Kiyotsuris and – they're in a high demand from that season. You're left with thousands of fish yeah, that you can't do. Give them away. Yeah. That's yeah. the problem, you know. And that's that's where it, yeah. So we have to find our marketplace and work with that. And yeah. as much as we want to do certain things, we still have to do the business side of it. And that's got us the same pretty much for everyone. Isn't it? You and the, that's the thing with the hobby. In it, there's so much scope from your pond keeper that. We just, you know, they might spend a thousand pound a year on running a pond, buying the fish, feeding the fish, through to people that will spend 50, 100 grand a year, not bat an island. It's just monsters. The difference is massive. Yeah. But they should all be encouraged and they should all be encouraged to go to shows or learn. And But some people, they're not that bothered. They like beautiful fish, but too much hassle, isn't it? Too but the question is is it important that a koi dealer goes to Japan? I, no, I don't think so. Not if you're supplying a certain level of customer. I think it's important for your own knowledge. It's important for you, if you're a koi dealer that wants to grow and experience that. Of course it is. You should go. It's amazing. You do, you can't knock it, but to be a good koi dealer, you don't necessarily have to go to Japan. It's not. I don't. I don't see that's a requisite part of it. It's just. It's it's a, it's a thing on your CV. We say I've seen what there is to see. I've learned a tiny bit. Whether that makes you, you might bring back better fish, but that might not suit your business because your business might be different people that want cheaper stuff or whatever. I, you know, it's different. You, in my eyes, you should go, and we tell all of our customers, go everywhere. They come to us, sell, we buy from you. I say, yeah, but go, go to every shop. Go everywhere you can. See everything you can. If you're in Poland, go to Yoshiko. If you're in Japan, go. The more you see, the more oh, Brad, broader your your choice. Right. it's your choice isn't it and at the end of the day i'd much rather serve a customer and they're happy with our fish and they've seen everything there is to see but our price point and our fish are what they want that's that's ideal isn't it you know it's everyone can't go to japan but there's a lot of times you, there's different places you can go you can go and visit every aquatic outlet you can not to buy fish to look at fish to the more you see the better it is Across the board. Even Ryan, sorry, we're just chatting away without you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what, do you what, what do you think, Ryan? Oh, I, I'm, Daz, what do you think? Go on, Daz, I'll let you go first, mate. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm well. just brewing my concoction up at the minute, what I'm going to say. <laughs> 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 yeah, I totally get him with that. Opinion. Oh, this way. I totally agree with what Ricky says. It's not. It's not essential. <laughs> <laughs> but it does help. If, That's about if, right. You get to know how, how the system works a lot better. You should. I mean, at the end of the day, you should. You should see if you if you've got the opportunity to see anything. You know, if you can go to an outlet and see Israeli fish, English fish, Polish fish, Jap fish. You can see, and the more you understand, the more you learn, you'll be able to actually walk into a place and go, well, I know well, where, they're they're produced, they're where they're produced. Yeah. And that's just, it's the same thing, isn't it? It uh, just blows my mind, the, the sheer amount of interest and fish we sell from the lowest level to, to the best we produce. And the best we produce, obviously, is nowhere near what you can get from Japan. But the, the huge amount of people that want... They want the best stuff. They haven't got the pocket for the best stuff. You know, be it families, be it whatever. There is a budget. So, yeah, people that have knowledge can come to us and then there'll be a tank of fish at 50 quid, say, and there's fish in there that are worth two or 300 quid. If you pick the one or two gems out, there's some good stuff in there. There's also fish in there that probably aren't even worth 50 quid, but they're all 50 quid and we'll sell them all at 50 quid. Yeah, We'll help people as much as... We can, but you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, and a lot of people just I want that yellow one. <laughs> yeah. you, and you, yeah. do you, you'll have to somewhere though, don't they as well? Yeah. So it, 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 there's. I think that's where it, like you hit the nail on the head there, really, aren't you? When you say beauty is is in the eye of the beholder, and it, it truly is, because at the end of the day, if somebody turns around and says, "I want a specific fish," you've got something that you know that you can be going to look at. But you could put 50 of that type or that variety of fish in a bowl, but the, that person's going to pick whatever they really want out of there, even if you say, right, we process that one out and that one out and that one out and that one out until we get to a point where we can say, right, there's five, pick from them. What do you think? They're going to still then pick the one that they truly like, aren't they? To a point. Yeah, well, some people, some people will go with your... If they're learning and they want the best they can get money wise, value wise, that's going to become the best fish. And then you get um you get others that literally go, Well, I like the head pattern on that one. Whether it's got a wonky fin, missing eye, it's just something they like that fish. So why would you, you know, talk them into a fish that might be better in terms of quality, but actually they don't enjoy as much as that fish. But then you've got then you can go from that scale to Ryan's scale or to Crafty's scale or to Daz's scale, who's on an adventure of going down the line and starting to learn it all and start becoming and when you know Daz, do you not would you consider this an important thing for you as somebody that's gonna be eventually, you know, when you stop doing your landscape gardening and you make this what you wanted to do as your not not retirement, but the end of gardening side of things, landscaping, and then yeah. going to the, the koi breeding side of things and try and make a little bit of a business out of that. Is it important? Do you think it's important to you to visit Japan? To know all, and get as much knowledge from that visit as you can to bring that back to your farm? Yeah, yeah. I, th I think it'll be a game changer. I mean, just, just talking to some of the breeders as well, the, all the, the wealth of information that you can gain from them. You're just seeing how, how they, they set up all their ponds and everything. It's, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. He's looking forward to it. He's obviously got it on the agenda. Possible. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go on then, go on then, Crafty. What do you reckon? Well, I've heard, I've heard a lot of waffly bullshit on social media forums where I'm not, I'm ready for this. What, I'm glad you said that. that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't write this And one. it is waffle and it is bullshit. And there's different levels of, you know, abilities. But that makes no difference in business, you know. To, to me, or, or, or I'm wrong, it makes a difference in business. But it all depends on what, what spectrum of the scale you're looking at in your custom. Okay, so does... Right, so going from someone 
that had toy supplied from someone that had been to Japan millions of times, you know, to go into Japan once. I can already tell everybody that just that one trip um, increased my knowledge and therefore give me better understanding and a link to where them fish come from. The condition of the place, how that dealer was operating, you know, although that is only limited in the scale of like someone that's been 50 times, it's still, again, me starting somewhere. Do you need to have gone to Japan to sell koi? Absolutely not. Right. But the level of information that you give at that point depends on the network of people you choose to keep company with. Okay. As long as you, you can only really, you can only really advise based on what you're being told rather than what you've been experiencing. Um, and that's the difference. So, you know, does someone that's been to Japan 50 times bring in different fish to me? It all depends on their <laughs> it all depends on their customer base, doesn't it? You know, yeah, like what Rick says, you know, if you've got people in the shop that are spending 20 quid on small little fish, they don't need to be the best quality. They probably don't need to know that they've come from I don't know, Marasaka or you know, Sakazumi, they don't really care. As far as they're concerned, that, that's just a Japanese name on a board. They look at a pattern and they look at a colour of a fish. However, if you've got somebody that's willing to spend, you know, good money, five, six, seven, eight thousand pounds on a fish, you know, that they're, they're more likely to go to the guys that have got that knowledge on a basis that that's where potentially, but not necessarily, where their knowledge is going to be. Unless they're one of the, the few koi keepers in, in the world that spends big money on big fish just because they've got a lot of money to spend, but they're actually still at the same scale as someone spending £20 because they're just putting fish into a pond, you know. The chances of that happening, you know, are quite high, actually. If someone spent twenty grand in our shop last year that has never kept a pond before. They just wanted some nice big fish to go in it. You know, knew nothing about it. And it was, I like that yellow shiny one. Or I like that red, white, <laughs> one, red and white one. It's like, okay, try and give them a little bit of advice and a little bit of knowledge for the money that they're, that they're spending with you quite quite clearly. But it doesn't matter if someone's spending 20 quid with me or £5,000. They'll all get the same sort of treatment, dependent on whether or not, if they've asked questions, they'll get answers and always give them a little bit. So do you need to go to Japan? Absolutely not. But if you do... You know, that only broadens your experience and therefore you, you're able to share that experience with your customers. You know, that's how I see it. Well said. Go on then, Ryan. <laughs> Go on, drum roll. <laughs> just, just tell me a question again, guys. What was the actual question? Oh, God damn it. No, there is no question. <laughs> um, is it important that a dealer has visited Japan or visits Japan to buy their own stock? Not to buy their own stock, but for an educational purpose and educating your customers and relaying what you're selling and the knowledge behind that. Yes, you do. Agreed. Even if you've been once, you've got to do it because I'm not being funny. If you're going to sit there and bluff your way through something because you've not been, but you think you know everything out there, what's happening because you've heard from your agent that someone's going to tuck a shit on side at Mountain and that's what you're going to tell somebody. Yeah, that's not what people want to do. They want to be educated in that, what they're buying and that process from start to finish again if you're buying a 10 pound fish 100 pound fish five gram fish don't matter you know like crafty said i think you've got to treat your customers the same throughout because that guy spending a tenner that's that guy's dream fish probably so it is for the man that can afford a five gram fish you've got to give that level of service across the board and that's just how it is and you've got to educate people on the fish that you are selling and if you don't know where they've come from what they are alone. simple as that to me I, I don't, it's hard for me to say as well because I've lived and breathed it from being a young age so it's different, difficult for me to explain from someone joining the hobby or coming into his, his business at 40, 50 year old I don't I don't know, you know because I don't know what, well, what you we'll move on from that <laughs> 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 we're, we're all night shag, you know what I mean I think as an obvious perspective it really, really doesn't matter you know, I think people enjoy the hobby for what it is. They enjoy talking to the koi dealer about the 
the visits to Japan and stuff like that. I certainly know I have people that just come and collar me all the time, just go, oh, you know, what about this? What about that? You know, I'm happy to share my knowledge of what people want to see. And obviously, like, with Lee's videos has been great because people see me in a sort of, you know, day-to-day -day basis of what I do out there. And I think it's good for people to see. Selection process, sort of how ruthless I am with stuff, the quality control over things, certain things, you know, how, how it all operates. You know, even still now, we started off doing a lot of cheap coin originally, but trying to make a difference in them cheaper price points. I mean, we still do that now, even though we're selling fish, you know, of crazy value, we still focus on them people that where the business all started and we'll never turn it back on them sort of people, you know, because a lot but of they're, they're, they're the customer. That, that, that's tomorrow's custom again now, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. You know, because everyone starts somewhere and generally people start at the smaller end of the scale with regards to price point. They're yeah. the, they're, they they become the fish like what somebody's put in the comments with regards to uh, levels of knowledge and them fish going belly up. You know, it, it, <laughs> let's face it, I, I, when I started keeping koi, it was like, yeah, people started buying me as presents. I put more in and more in. And then next thing you know, you've lost everything because your filter's not big enough. You don't know nothing about water, you know. And then that's where that's where the hobby then starts to put you in, pull you in. And then you know you realise there's a hell of a lot more to it. So it's important to have, in my opinion, that level of uh, price point for new customers, you know, because though you know not everybody is as people out there. You know, spend that money on on koi and then grow them successfully and enjoy them because, you know, they're they're still decent enough koi. Yeah, they're still in the top two percent of a culling. You know, of a of you know, and and to be perfectly honest, you know, there's some there's some um, breeders out there like Fuji, for instance, that wouldn't let me select Tozai. So I got a scoop, you know, for a certain price, and they come at a certain price point. So you know, Aoki. Um, Coda, they they all do those smaller so size um, fish for people to to come and grow on, and there's some absolute bangers in there if you if you're lucky enough to pick them. Right. Well, whilst we continue, these guys continue talking about this topic. I will ask the next one, which is an audience related question. To those that are watching, what are the three main things that you look for in a dealer? So, if you can bangers your ideas what it is that you look for in a dealer in the comments and then we can bring them up and share them with obviously ryan rick craft it and does for the future because at the end of the day this is something as a feedback side for you guys because as for me what i look for in a dealer i mean it's, it's quite nice to ask that question you yeah. know week in week out we'll sit on a on a panel and answer questions and you know, it's an opportunity for us to look at what other people look for, you know, because it, it, at the end of the day, you won't be tuning into this channel, you know, and taking up, guys, you wouldn't put it on if you weren't interested in Koi. So, you know, who, who better to have a mass audience and ask that one question to? I know not everybody types in the comments, but what I would say is if you aren't somebody that normally types in the comments, take a hit and do it now. You know, just so we can have a look. It's eight, it's eight o'clock, isn't it? Sorry. My, my niece brought me a fish and she wanted to know what sort of fish it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's scary. Wait. <laughs> yeah, is that what your, uh, is that what your, is that what your that, niece got you? That's your best yeah. tatagoy, mate. Me that. I think it's a Midori goy parrot. <laughs> oh, I said I put it on eight o'clock. You did it. Hang on, did well, it. four minutes after. It's not for me, is it? I might keep it. I might wear it at work tomorrow in the shop. I reckon you should wear that on one of lives, mate. <laughs> yeah, right. God. I can't drink for. I need a straw to drink for it. I think just going back to the original question as well, something I just thought about is as well, it depends on your supply source as well, where you feel comfortable with as well. I think if you've got a, obviously, internal UK wholesaler or you've got a UK, you know, breeder, whatever you've got to supply, if you're happy with that and you've got a good supply of fish and you're comfortable, fine. If you've got dreams and aspirations to do more and have your own stamp on things, because don't forget them wholesalers are controlling what they're giving you in that environment. It's what they want to sell you. At the end of the day, it's not about, 
you know, if you want your own stamp on things and, and sort of spread your wings and run with your own ideas, you have to go to Japan for that, 100%. Because, you know, there's a certain old sailor out there now that does both sides at fence. You know, do, do they all, do, does the wholesale business work in terms of do they get the best fish from, from that supply chain? Probably not. You know, are the prices reasonable? You know, got to go through all these things because it's, it's another person in the chain as well that yes everyone's entitled to make money and do what they do as a business but you've also got that side of it as well someone's controlling what you're buying and it's another person linking chain is that sustainable when you're trying to reach the peaks of you know a selling aspect especially for someone like me i need to eliminate as many people in chain as i can you know and i am on i am on the physical shortest chain i could possibly have that's that's how it has to be at the end of the day for me i think if you're going to go to that top level and you want to supply everybody and you've got customers that want to spend 10 grand on a fish and you want you know You've got customers that want selected jumbo toes are they want all these you know kind of criteria you've got to be out there and doing it otherwise you're just going to miss out but that's the that's the top end dealer isn't it like it's like you're saying so you yeah. you've the, 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 you need the bottom end dealers that sounds bad not the bottom end but you need the dealers that are for bringing people in and fulfilling bringing new people in that bottom end of stuff as well so you need the whole chain of people so if you've got 10 dealers in the country that are selling the top fish from japan yeah whatever it happens to be but then you need 90 dealers selling entry level oh, sure. you know, yeah. decent fish better than perhaps what we're doing but in that middle range and then you need another thousand dealers that are doing the, the, the cheaper end stuff because you just need you always need the top end hobbyists don't buy they get to a point where they can look after fish they don't actually generally then buy that many fish to support a dealer do they you, you, it's such a small point of the pyramid yeah that's right you, you need that base of coming through all the time isn't it? yeah and, you know we see it all the time like i said the amount of people we, we supply and then there's a growing hobby we can't supply them anymore we're like well you need to go and see so and so or so and so this is the kind of fish they sell this is the kind of budget you're looking at and they work their way up and some will work their way up some will come back to us and say that's actually not for me some will carry on up the chain and you know it's it's just the way well, it's just the way things work isn't it? You, 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 you can see how that could happen though and all that can't you let's say for example you, you know you they, they get in there maybe not at the maximum top peak of the pyramid but they get in there high well up and they get a good amount of stock in and then one thing goes wrong in the pond and they realize that that's a lot of money i've lost can i can i or would i or should i go back through that route and do that again or do I start with just something that's enjoyable and, and go to a more cheaper variety because I've lost so much? At some point, at some stages in, you know, no, I... pond and fish keeping, you can expect that will happen to someone and they're going to make that conscious decision as to whether or not they go straight back to Ryan and say, right, I want another 50 grand's worth or I'm going to go I to Rick. to Crafty and say, I want another 10 as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To be honest, we get we get a few that like I say regress, but it's not necessarily regress. They they learn, and then actually the joy is then perhaps trying to achieve a similar, maybe not quite the same quality, but similar quality by hunting through younger fish or hunting through a different. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, getting that's those fish because you've learned a lot about koi, and suddenly you realise actually you can go and buy. Rather than buying Sansa and Yonza, you can buy Tosai and you can actually pick Shearer at Suri and buy four, 200 quid each to get yep. to that point. And you've learned, you've learned a different way of getting to your end goal and perhaps you find that a lot more enjoyable because you see yeah. progression. And one in four does what you hope. Three and four, you can get your money back as they grow. Well, you know, there's, there's so many aspects to it. Um, you know, we've been like that recently, Rick, honestly, like, especially with jumbo toes I've seen upon us now. I've had people recently as well that have been buying, say, like Sakai fish was a prime one. They've been buying four or five Sakai toes I really young, saying, look, like this is where I want to be in terms of price. Obviously, we access the fish, we get them, it's fine. But they're saying they want to eliminate the fact that if they buy five, they're only looking for two good fish out of them five after growing yeah. season. That's what they're potentially looking for because you try and invest in good money in two you know, perfect Nissa, if you want to call it, from Saka. I wish you all best. I'd shake your hand and say, on up the road, because, I mean, Monday, Tuesday, sort of Sakai auction actually finished, and I've spent 
probably a solid three and a half hours of my life completely. Well, I'm not wasted is the wrong word to say. So they get some fish, but the prices was just wow. 15 cm toes I sank, for example, and I would disclose the price because it's ludicrous. It went for 3.6 million yen. Oh my God. So put that into translation, we're at ballpark figure of like 17 and a half, 18,000 pound. And that's a dealer's price that you've got to buy oh, that. 2.6 one. 3.6. Wow. Yeah. Like, that's the sell point, though, isn't it? See, but that, that's, a, that's the extreme of the best farm to selling their best fish at an absolute crazy money. But, but, like say, you, but, but then there's still it, the risk on that fish, isn't there? It's still only it's a 15 billion fish well that is not fully not developed. Go wrong, yeah. Time of the year, realistically, them fish are probably from a late spawning, 14, 15, seeing so what they've got at the minute, which is fine. The sakai fish still at the end of the day, and they've got it, but. I just saw fish there that I started to see, and I thought, yeah, the sakai fish, the good quality, but are they really the best? And do they really command these sort of prices? Because trust me, there was a lot that went far behind that as well. There was serious doubt. Like, and I just thought, I don't, you know, for me as a dealer, I always, you know, I look at sakai and I never have any dispute with the sakai in the number one world. Yeah. The debate about number two, I'll always have because is Mamatero or Dainichi in pecking order? At the minute, I would say it's Dianichi Mamatero, in my opinion. Agreed. From, where I, from what I see of the farm and what I believe, you know, as my knowledge of the koi and seeing everything is a whole, whole package, yeah, Dianichi is number two. Always will be. They just offer a different a different level. You know, you're talking the broad range of varieties they do, like at Sakai, that you, a lot of time that you don't see. Mamatero is so limited and they've got a lot of Azakari problems, the raising problems there, just sort of general i never say you know they're not number three because they always are but to me that's a good order but i just saw just a stamp of like this is a sakai fish you know let it roll and i just thought this is not not this is not normal because then you put in perspective what you can buy with that money elsewhere at another farm you go to mariama tomorrow you know it's uh you go to all these places the money that you can buy these fish for yeah you can find any fish for that kind of money when you're paying that kind of price you've got your options are endless you know, as long as you can unlock, unlock them fish at certain times, fine. Just because they're on an auction page, everyone's got access to it, and it's like, no, nah, sorry, I just, I don't see it. It's a worldwide stage, isn't it? That's the problem. Yeah, and they're all competing, yeah, 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 which is fine. And obviously, Sakai have obviously launched. I think it might have been this year, or I think they did a bit last year. But they obviously stopped at one point. There was only a certain amount of value you could keep as Azakari there, which was fine. You know, because they were trying to limit the amount of Azakari fish that you could actually physically keep at the farm. Now they've introduced a new stage to try and comp obviously knock down each Mamatera off the spots. Is right, we're going to start introducing this that single selected pieces, unsexed, when you buy them, they include the Azakari with good Azakari terms as well to obviously offer something different as a bigger farm to say, right, this is what we're going to do now to try and offer, which obviously then instantly, when, when them fish used to have to, you know, have to be shipped, they don't command that value. Now all of a sudden, They've decided they're going to raise them probably in concrete ponds, maybe in mud ponds, whatever they're going to do with them. Don't matter because either way, raising at Sakai, they're going to achieve goodness size sizes. They're going to be 50 to 55 sakai without trade. But it's all of a sudden the prices of just because you can just go and buy that one fish that you're chasing. You know, you don't have to ship it home then. You know, you're not trying to fill a box up on an auction. You're not, I've got all this pressure. Whereas at Dainichi, the pressure is I buy one and I win that first one by the end of day three. I have to fill a box up and I have to get it shipped out of their ASAP, you know, and that's pressure because they, you know, big farms are non-negotiable, 35 kilos of weight. You know, I've had 10 toes I turn up other week. They nearly drowned. They had much water in box, <laughs> but that's it. They've got no principles because fish turn up in good condition like they do. Bam. Well, this is the weight. It's massive costs dealing with them farms because they do not negotiate. Narita. <laughs> I was about to mention Narita. Right. Marie has got a, the best standard of anything you'll ever see. But when you try shipping fish there, he will just tell you straight, you are shipping that one fish in a box. That is the end of it. You know, you've got no push and pull. Otherwise, it'll just go back in drink and he's not interested. He'll just say, forget it. You know what? Well, and literally, if you don't go by by his rules, you're not sending, you're not packing fish from anywhere. That's just it. But that's, yeah, I've just experienced that. Right? I've just experienced that with a few boxes that I, I have picked up from Narita. Hmm. Um, although be it what I will say is when they turned up they was in the best condition I've ever seen any imported fish 
yeah. you know, and you can't take that away from him. But he did add so much extra money onto my onto my bill that was sort of unaccounted for, really. Because in my head, it was like, we get that many fish in. And he was like, oh, you fuck, you're getting free. And I was like, but we can we can put five in there. No, you're getting fucking free, and that's your lot. Yeah. So, of course, there's another two boxes on, on your shipment that you've got to then Yes, paint. that's the bit where you read the small print. <laughs> <laughs> there is no fucking small print, mate. <laughs> that's why I always admire that guy for as well, because it's like when he does his koi operation, when he does his packing, anything to do with it from end to end. Well, that's what you pay for at these big places. You, you know, don't you get to find this stuff out, though, by going over there or, or, or experiencing it, though, wouldn't you? Correct. Oh, yeah. Honestly, guys, honestly, just run in the re- uh, buy some fish and say, right, how's it roll then? And you're thinking you bring what experience like I had of, right, these numbers will be right, this sort of weight will be right. He's just like, no, nah, forget it. Not interested. Literally just like, <laughs> that's how we're running, and that's that. You know, and, it's, and it is naughty. You've got to be, you know, if you win something cheap in an auction, it's not cheap by the time it gets an auction. The freight's just killing it, you know. How much is the freight box now? A couple hundred quid? At best. Well, and obviously coming from Narita, four or five hundred. So, yeah. So you, 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 you're paying more for a box of water than most people would ever pay for a fish. You know, yeah. our client base. Damn, man. You know, 400 fish quid we sell for the box. 500 quid, so. You're free fish in it. And then you're free fish on top of that. And then your eating costs of obviously getting the fish in, QT in six weeks, eat ramping, food, treatments. On top of that, you know, it's people, a lot of people that like to always throw a coin dealer. Oh, you're making loads of money, you lot. Look at you, you're swimming in it. But don't, <laughs> you don't forget that. Down your forest cove, right? Don't you forget the wage work. on that. The wage on that, the VAT on that as well. Yeah. You know. The, Customs clearance, all the rest of it that you have as well. Hmm. You know, it's, it's, a lot to, it's a lot to manage. And that's why it's always difficult to buy at them sort of places. And you've got to make it worthwhile when you do and be careful and mindful of what you buy as well. So one of the answers there then, what we've got from ANC is good koi at great prices. That's what he's looking from. Uh, well, for great the, koi uh, at good prices. <laughs> yeah, great, koi, great koi at good prices. Sorry. <laughs> um, right, I mean, DT on, says, on that, trust, that, knowledge guys. and experience. Guys, on, on, on ANC's last one, Right, it should always be great koi, irrespective. You know, it, it, it mm. should, but the price should also reflect against what's in the tank. You know, it shouldn't. It should never be overegged. I mean, I I've seen koi in the past that you know are very overpriced in comparison to the quality that you get simply because the price point that people buy from. Yeah, you know, we've, I think we've I think we've all been to somewhere oh. where we've seen. A grade price koi, and you're looking at the I hate the term, but garden centre grade koi. Yeah. Mm. But that's where the knowledge of the buyer comes in, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it does. Yeah, so you know, a, lot, day, a lot of garden centres. Oh, sorry, Rick, go on. Yeah, but if the customer knows their stuff, so you, they could they should be able to see quality or no quality. And within a few questions, know the age of the fish, the, what you need to know about it. And if that fish is two grand and you're looking at, well, it's a 200 quid fish, you, either the dealer's lying through his ass or there's a bit of mis, miscommunication somewhere. But that's that as a customer, you have some kind of responsibility to know what you're on about to a degree. Surely you're going to look after that fish. And if you go and buy, you know, something that's deformed or just, or quality for a stupid amount of money because it's from a farm or the dealer says it's amazing and yeah. who's at fault really it's, it's a bit of both isn't it i mean for me there's too much of this chain aquatic shops you know there's a few of them out there big names i'm not mentioning but they'll buy fish in buy the box yeah the manager at shop puts it through system system tells him he needs to make x y and z that's what they come out at. They don't actually physically know looking in front of them what them fish are actually worth. It's what the spreadsheet tells them and it tells them what they're worth because that's what they're paid and that's what they want by the end of it. That is all it boils down to. Sorry. I've had times when it, if I've ever done a blind order on fish and they've turned up and I'm, I'll am shit you not, I'll, I'll look at them and I'll just think, don't see me money in them, they're gone. See you later. I'll get rid because what's point? I'm not going to sit there and sell something without my quality control being behind it. I don't want it. 
literally, if I got 70 fish turn up in a box, there were, you know, 12 to 15 cm, look at them and I think, right, if there's 20 fish in there that are no good, they're literally gone. gone. Yeah, see you later. Take them out. And that's an instant loss already on that box of fish that you've got coming in. But at the end of the day, standards are everything. And if you're not going to stick to your standards and what you want to do from one end to the yeah. other, again, what's the point in doing it? You know, and that's what it boils down to. But that's, not to that's something to someone like you that has known Koi all your life and deals with Koi and someone that's a businessman that goes, they cost me two quid, I'll sell them for 10 quid, covers all yeah. my costs, that's that. Regardless, yeah. you get someone else that go for a box and go, there's a couple of gems in there, I'll quadruple my money or 10 times my money on them and work a box that way. There's different ways of doing it in there. But again, it's not just, the dealers have got to be held responsible for whatever they sell, we've got to be right. Correct. Yeah. But also, the customers, you do get customers that will walk in and if they're told it's gold, they are spend that mm. it's gold. Really. And that, mm. that, that that's kind of the customer's fault. You walk into a car salesman and buy a car, <laughs> it's, it's your car and it's going to be it? a bit of Del Boy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. There's, 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 we've, all, we've all experienced that too, though, haven't we? We've all been to the place where somebody turns around and tells you, oh, these are from, they, uh, they're from here, they're from there, they're from over... And you know damn well. I mean, I know they were a place in Huddersfield that used to sell fish. <coughs> and he used to turn around and say that all those fish were Japanese imports and they were bred in Huddersfield. No. <laughs> yeah. But that's straight up. Just a local breeder that were breeding them in Huddersfield. Yeah. But you, you also get that, even the, just even the word Japanese koi. So we've always always sold our fish as English, right? They're right. bred in England. Okay, they're bred from Japanese, but they're, we, they're English. We get people that buy our fish, and they were all koi Japanese, Japanese koi, the Japanese. And suddenly that doubles the value. I mean, it doesn't matter how good or bad they are, just the terminology will influence people on what they're paying. But, but that shouldn't, should it? Because uh, Japanese koi come from a completely different setting, and they cost so much more to bring over that the... The, the markup on English koi, or whether they're Japanese from Japanese parents sets or what, it should not, it, there shouldn't be any extra royalties on that. No, but you get the people coming out, it's, it's a German shepherd, it doesn't matter, it's not bred in Germany or whatever. And it's, you know, <laughs> everyone has their play on things or whatever. We, we try and be as absolutely transparent and as honest, but if we sell a box of our worst sea grey fish to someone, it doesn't stop them selling them as something different down the line. Yeah. That's, we can't control what other people do, you know, and that's, it's difficult, isn't it? Because if a dealer says something, something, someone will believe them. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you've got that's knowledge. Difficult. about it, That's got know. to be, that's got to be the knowledge. And then that's got to be the honesty, hasn't it? There you go. Yeah. It's difficult for the, for the customer as well, though, because if the Japanese were sold as VHQ, Japanese koi, if the Israeli fish, they're just sold as koi. They're never sold as Israeli fish, or very, very rarely. Yeah, but there's there's certain points. If you're if you're a businessman, you're not going to put something that's going to devalue on fish, no, but you're going to put something that is going to increase value. Yeah. So well, from a customer's know, point of view, it's a bit of a minefield, isn't it? Unless they know exactly what they're looking at. But you, you'll get people that you know. If 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 we if we use Dainichi parents to produce our shower. There are show English bread fish, whatever. But I tell people they're produced from Dainichi parents. And the next, you know, someone's selling those fish as Dainichi showers, you know, Japanese. Technically, they're kind of twisting the truth somewhat, aren't they? That's the honesty bit, isn't it? It's the little white lie. <laughs> it's, it, yeah, little one. it's difficult, isn't it? So, yeah. Where, where do you even, obviously, obviously, a Gatakoi farm still do that, though, Rick, as well. You know, they produce all their fish you'll see in auctions. They'll be the good quality Japanese koi, the breed and the stunning. You know, they have such a wide mix of varieties. I don't personally use them myself, but uh, you'll see everything plastered. Omasako bloodline, Izumiya bloodline, Sakai bloodline. They live off back of that still, and they've done that for years, and I don't fault them for it. You know, they're just letting people know where they've come from. And it might yeah, be... Yeah, that's, 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 that's being that. transparent at the same blood. So I'd say... Are sankeys from Momotaro, which they are, yeah. but I'm not saying them as Momotaro sankeys from Japan. Yeah, yeah. So you've got to be transparent. Choice, and, choice with yeah. your wording. You've got to be yeah, transparent. Yeah. 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 I think if you want to be in the business a long time and you love the business, you should. You are. 
there's other people that just it's just money in it. You've got that passion, you're open to share, you know, like Yamaguchi, we was on about touched on him a bit last week. He will quite happily get his phone out to me and show me exactly where every fish has come from, tell me about it, ins and out of a duck's arsehole and say, Look, you know, this this is everything. And I, I he even told me some figures what he paid for fish. And I was like, holy shit, like I wish you all best with that. I can bought an house. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was just like, you know, but it's nice to know because you know, I don't know going to buy a parent fish. You know, I you know, I know a lot about koi and I think, yeah, great, but you know, would I want to pay that kind of money to start breeding off something? Absolutely not no just you know, <laughs> you know you know i won't i won't want to you know but it's nice to have that information shared to you if you're buying a fish because for me when you buy something special in japan like that sanky that we looked at last week that to me i just from end to end seeing it all you know even like i've never had a i've never been thrown a picture of a fish when it's four centimeters and said look this was it when i was grading it out in mud pond this is what it looked like and i was like shit you know from end to end of that purchase i've seen it all there and then it was great and if you come and see me, mate, seriously, I'm going to show you pictures from four centimetres to tens of parents. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah, not going to sell them. Well, that's mate. great standards, that's, that is, mate, isn't it? Yeah, that's what we do, isn't it? Because we see, we know the parents, we know the grandparents, we know we know everything. And at the end of the day, we're standing on the shoulders of giants. We're, we are copying the breeders. We're, we're yeah. buying the best we can afford to buy that's, and following it, but again, we're never going to be producing to their level because yeah. the, the quality is not good enough from... The, their parents are better than our parents. They've got some more fish than us, so we're never going to be anywhere near them. Absolutely. Yeah. We can come in at a, a, a price point in a marketplace that's that, that, that works. So that's what we're doing. It again. That's that, that. Like we just pulled it back up there. That's from Terence. That's that's knowledge and honesty, isn't it? The knowledge of what you're using, what you've got, and that you're being honest about what you've got because you've got it all documented. It's all there for everybody to see. Yeah. Being the plowed, people you, say customer plowed, services, yes, yeah. quality of stock, and knowledge again. Customer service is a difficult one, though, Gus, to be fair, because people expect different levels of customer service. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, God damn it. It's <laughs> like, where do you fit what in, in customer service? For example, and I'll use the Tropic section in my shop, right? They'll buy a bag of little Tetras for two ninety nine 99 a piece, get them home, and they're all floating <clears throat> because, you know, they haven't survived a three-hour journey. They then want more fish in return. You know, it's like, it's like, well, hang on a minute. Let's have a look at this. You know, do I take the hit on that because they haven't told me they're going, like, to Scotland from the shop? <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't know, you'd have put them in a, a box yeah, of a heat but, You know, it's like, for example, mate, they're a tropical fish. By the time they get to Scotland, they're in, like, eight-degree water instead of 24 or whatever it should be. You know what I mean? It's like, well, hang on a minute. Let's do some That's warm for Scotland, mate. Jesus. But <laughs> we, 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 on the, people on the from flip, Scotland in the shop that, that On the flip of that, this. then. No. Should your staff be asking how far they're going to be travelling? I know, I know that that's just, you know, playing yep. devil's advocate a little bit. Should your staff be asking? Of course. Have you got that long journey to make? Are you going to, are you 20 minutes around the corner? Have you got a, a four hour drive? How far have you travelled? I mean, don't don't get me wrong. That was that was a completely made up example. Yeah, right? yeah, but that, yeah. I mean, that, prime yeah, example. My, my, my place would have done the same. My local tropical would have been exactly the same, mate. He would have yeah. just you'd have walked in there. You just like, all right, I want twenty neon tetras, okay. Oh, else, hey. yeah, That's I'll good. have uh, four rumino tetras. Oh, else, yeah, take that tag downstairs. See you later, mate. Yeah, no, one, visible one, shit. Never asked you any questions. Didn't care. Just one, one thing I always ask is, you know, have, have, have you got far to go? That's what I ask. You know, it, it don't matter so much in the in the in the koi world, but on the other side, it does because you can then gain. The delicate, aren't they? We yeah. If, if, if things don't go right, if it, just coming back to the customer service, when you then refuse to replace any stock or give a refund. You go from really good customer service to the worst customer service because someone else has made the mistake. So it's like you have to gauge what the customer service is, and it's the same on like um, like Google when when you look at like Google sort of reviews or Trustpilot and that. There, a lot of them are a load of bollocks, mate. To be perfectly honest, you know, it's you know you you'll get five stars that isn't backed up with any sort of any sort of sort of um 
like vlogging there at all but you'll get one where you're the worst thing in the world because you haven't done a microscopic like sort of examination on some fish feces do, do you know what i mean and it's like but some people look at the one stars more than they do the others you know it, it customer service should be everyone gets treated the same in the shop that's that's you know my mantra to it yes polite dealers knowledgeable and has a soh what's that I was hoping one of you guys were going to pronounce that. No, that means I'm lost with that one. Son of a what? <laughs> SOP, maybe standard operating procedures. I don't know what SOHs are. Yeah. Maybe it's a misspell and it should be an N. So it's in capitals, bold. You must have a son. <laughs> What's an SOH gaming channel 007? What else have we got? Uh, knowledge. Good fish elf and honesty. Yep. That's good. Good fish elf is see. I'm surprised that hasn't popped up more actually. Yeah. USA. Okay. I ain't got none of them. Surely experience is key. Uh this YouTube of oh, hang about that's another one. Hang about, that's, let's, let's that's a part of a different conversation. That's a part of a different right. Uh Chris wants to know. I, I want people's thoughts on experience. Yeah. As a YouTuber this week reckons experience means shite. Which I don't believe. So then the second part bit of it's gonna be surely experience is key. This YouTuber when keeping lots of koi at one point makes them better in terms of experience and knowledge. Absolutely. Experience is everything, isn't it? Experience is key. I think even if even if experience has got to be key, because if you experience the bad things and you can get to come through those, that's knowledge on how to rectify and identify issues and problems before they arise and become situations that are out of your control. So experience has definitely got to be a key element. There's different types of experience as well, and it? People will make lots of mistakes without learning beforehand. You can read. There's no excuse now. If you're going to keep, keep a dog or you're going to keep fish, whatever you're going to do, you can get on YouTube, you can go on the internet, and learn about water quality, nitrogen cycles, filtration, volume, stock density. It's all there. So if you want to learn it, you can. But the amount of people that still put fish in their pond, feed the crap out of them, come back, oh, my fish aren't right, here's some water. Well, you moan this through the You know, the, the basics. Oh, wow, well, I've got a big filter. When did you put that on? Last week. Uh, <laughs> you <laughs> that's the you that's <laughs> experience. <laughs> in a shop right it's like people people on the end like there's some bollocks on youtube let's face it right and some people on there haven't got a fucking scooby what they're going on about right you know i'll be as blunt as that because it's true um amen to that yeah um the the level of experience on keeping three or four fish (laughs) no no guys yours is about your experiences mate and that's why experience is key yeah it's not as in this knowledge. Knowledge bollocks, mate, I won't be here right now. I'm gonna be straight about that as well. <laughs> Very <laughs> true as well. Yeah. Um, but when when you look at experience, experience in keeping koi in a shop, going through QT and keeping them healthy, looking good, etc. It's another level to keeping a pond of fish in your garden. Yeah. All right, and that it was a fucking steep learning curve for me you know going from one pond with you know eight nine years of experience with a business brain going in and then going fuck okay this is a little bit different to what i really did expect did you all get loose at any point say again (laughs) did you all get loose at any point (laughs) probably after the second week it went it all fell out Um, (laughs) You know, when you then start looking at the amount of ponds, the fish that are coming in at different times, now at QT in, I've stepped up my scale. And, you know, that experience and that knowledge, it it transfers across into the advice that you can give your customers. So, you know, there's not one YouTuber really out there that has that experience because... You know, irrespective of who they are, they fucking haven't. QT and fish is difficult, you know, yeah. to get them to the right state. 
it, one it, thing. Really, it takes a lot, a lot of work. There's one thing out of all this as well. This is what some of my old man taught me years ago. This is so. This is from being, you know, I couldn't even see some of the selling tanks that my dad had. I had to have a little step. Right, they were that fucking tall. But <laughs> he literally, if we'd had a busy weekend in shop, you'd still or, need that step. Now you can. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> but he literally, if say if we had, we were getting hammered on a certain mix. It could be a fifty pound mix, and it was constant all weekend. There were new fish gone in. You know, my dad had an off-site facility, like a bit like I run exclusively now. You have the constant evolving, turning around and stop to keep things fresh for customers. You know, there's none of this. We're talking about what's behind scenes. It's what's here right now. Move on from it. But something I learned from him was, and even koi shows and stuff like that. If that shop had a busy weekend on a certain tank of fish, they were off sale for two days because of that constant netting and that stress in that environment all the time. Boom, boom, boom. You think something at some point might not be in the shop, but when they go back to them customers' ponds, there will be an outbreak. Yeah, because something like that parasitically that's not sat quite right. But that again was always bred into me about standards, standards, standards. You work to them standards all the fucking time. It's not about, oh, man wants to walk in, spend 200 quid, take his money. Well, Listen, pal, if you want to buy them, you can see them in there, earmark them, they'll be back for sale on Wednesday. Come back then. You know, that is it, straight as, straight as it comes. Fish health comes first. Yeah. I'm not being funny. As a, de as a dealer, I'm going to be straight. You cannot get it 100% right all the time for every customer. Yeah, it's impossible. If you're going to send every single fish out that pass through my place, you know, bearing in mind on hand, at minute, I must have six, 7,000 fish. Some, if you're going to send every single one of them out parasite free and guarantee that to your customers, I wish you all the best. Yeah, there's no, there's no chance. Is there? There's no, yeah. nobody can ever do that. It's like you said, even even different stress events, even different treatments can bring out different conditions, different reactions. You can't have a fish. Let's say, like like you said, there, you're going in, you're netting up, and you're chasing those fish around six, seven times, twenty an hour depending on how many people you've got coming in in a busy commercial yeah. premises you yeah. can't expect that one fish in there that's you know thinks shit man i've never experienced nothing like this in my life and when, when it when, you know they, they get it home it's out of pond acclimated two hours later it's dead just from yeah. sheer stress of it not mm. no one fish is alike is it as everything's you know totally right i mean and what ryan says is stress mate in back in my shop mate you know when when we're busy, I reckon we must see 3,000, 4,000 people through our I'm going to say just foot traffic alone. You yeah. only, like your shop, as you say, three or 4,000 people a day coming through. That's like the same experience for a fish at a show. And you can see on certain types of fish in the show, by end at, sea, end at show scene, they're stressed out there. They are stressed. They've got people walking around a million times more noise than what it affects fish. And getting spooked a lot more in just yeah. in the environment. Yeah. That's why I for us for Koi shows, I mean, we touched on that last week, the preparation before the show is as less stress as possible and giving them a stable environment of consistency the week before the show. They have the weekend. The week after, we literally don't sell a fish. The, the whole week after, nothing will get sold because it's basically put under a small quarantine period again because you're waiting for that shit. I mean, National last year said nightmare. On the Friday, the temperatures dropped that much in the vats. That was already a bad start to weekend for, for everybody. Everyone on that side had got a seven, eight degree drop in temperature with fish that were, you know, sat in things wait, relying on water changes and no filters and stuff. Nightmare. Yeah. And was, I've had it a lot as well. Southeast Coy Show, we actually pulled out of doing that because the water quality down there was that bad. We actually, I, I actually watched a fucking horror show of what happened to a lot of dealers down there and people might have heard about it or not i don't know and i don't want to go into it too much but no don't because it has it isn't common knowledge but it's <laughs> but everything if, 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 if water quality is wrong wherever you go i'm sorry if you're an obvious dealer whatever you know you're protecting your own back that's it you know you can't do it and that's 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 that you know we do everything we can to protect that and again you know they'll say oh yeah we've declawed water for you not interested i'll do it myself I'm going to make sure it's done properly and how I want it done and the product I want to use in the water, regardless if they've done it or not. If you're going to start relying on other people doing your shit for you, again, it's all about that's, you know, looking that's after the That's standards, mate, isn't it? Standards yeah. and maintaining them throughout all the way through. Alan, as much as an old disgruntled twat, as we said last week, but he will, always, <laughs> he will always say to me when he comes up, he'll always say, do you know what? 
your water, your fish shelf, everything's always bang on. It'll always praise me for doing that before anything else about the quality. It's always about not the quality. Put that aside first of all. It's you know you don't walk into my tent with 12, 14 vats and it's chonging of ammonia. Never does. Yeah. You know because that's worst you want to see as a coy show. You walk in someone's tent and you're being laid up up floor because ammonia's done your heading. Do you know what I mean? It's <laughs> that's that's not what people want to be doing. That, that's your experience, though, isn't it? So you you know yeah. what you're doing. Other yeah. people perhaps don't. And the, the, the thing we're going to, like I say, an outdoor koi show event, the biggest stress beyond any any people around it is that temperature. Hmm. Because you yeah. maintain in your shop, my man, your quarantine, everything, it's all stable. Yeah. And that's the first time you'll be taking those fish somewhere where the temperature is going to fluctuate maybe up to eight or 10 degrees in a 24 hour window. And that is a monster. Of a... I'm, I'm going to be honest, right? I see too many dealers that treat these koi shows like it's an holiday. Yeah, they're like broke free from the day-to-day environment and they go in there, they're on pop all weekend. Some of them even on pop behind the tent, living their life. Ooh, let's go for it. Fish are a mess and you think, listen here, pal. Like, for me, I'm going there. It costs me an arm and a leg. I present myself how I am. Wait first on showground. My water's already, you know, the night I leave, the water's there. And even last year at National, we actually covered them over with polythene last year to try and get some temperature in during date with some polythene cheating to try and get that temperature back in water. You know, we're doing everything we can, working as hard as we can. We're first on, last off. We have a big operation to run. Bear in mind, there's only four of us do it. And to me, that's what it's all about. You know, walking in at half past eight on a Saturday morning when you're full of ale, stinking, you know, night before, which everyone's entitled to do what they want to do. But for me, yeah, that's regardless of the ale on the night before, you've got to be in doing this shit for them fish and making them right. Because for one, that's your livelihood. For two, that's how you represent yourself. And for three... People are actually trying to buy your fish and take them home on weekends as well, which they don't want to be going home, skipping and jumping out of water because they're full of ammonia, like they've just travelled 48 hours from Japan. Yeah. You know, no one needs to be doing that. They're paying for hard earned money out to dealers as well. And it's all about standards, standards, standards. You know, I can't sit there and praise myself and say, look, you know, I'm perfect, but I try and do every Nankev to the best of our abilities all the time for all of a couple. Yeah, but if you're getting if you someone. If you're getting someone like Alan Tate coming to give you a tap on the back, mate, then you know clearly you're doing something right because it's Al's Al's not somebody that will give praise where praise isn't due. Mm. You know, as much as he's an old miserable fucker, because he is, all right. You know, is he chimed up yet? No, (laughs) No, he ain't chimed up yet, mate. (laughs) Not yet. (laughs) I'm sure when he does, he'll come back with a vengeance, though. Well, why can you, at the end of the day, you've got to have, obviously, all, all the vats displaying fish, you've got standards. Stock density, water quality are all set standards. So why why couldn't they go around and have standards? Obviously, a pet shop license, you've got standards in your tank. So why, why, why are the show vats that you're selling fish from any different? Surely you could have someone just walk around and take a sample of all the water. If you're overstocked, your fish ain't been starved or whatever, but you, you can't sell fish, water shit. Yeah. yeah. But I don't, I don't get how that's even a... Well, I don't, I don't know. Surely that's, that's it, as, as part of the pet shop. You have to do that in your shop, yeah. Didn't you? So why is the I've show? Been, I've, I've seen people turn up, yeah, with well, if you want to keep your fish over weekend. Mine are already now. I tell everybody they kept. I use Fish Protect, Colombo Fish Protect, and I use a coil. That is an absolute given. The whole you time. Broke up, Roy. Yeah, you broke up just as that last bit as you were saying that. Then you you use Fish Protect and Colombo Fish Protect and Salt. The fish are kept in all weekend. That's that's what I do. Salts take like more as a tonic to take stress out of the environment a little bit. I think you've got to on a show weekend. So difficult for him to keep there. You know, it is it is difficult for him. Yeah. Kelly says she looks looked for a dealer who has as much time for me as someone who spends lots. As I have issue uh, health issues and I can't I can't work, so I have to save up for everything. <coughs> he always has time for me. That would be one thing I would agree with. I have been places myself, Kelly, where we've walked in and because we were interested in having a look at some grow-ons because we wanted some to grow on, and myself, Daz, and uh, yeah. Mick, we, we were ignored. We were completely ignored and completely blanked That's until beautiful. the point where Sorry, I was Gaz, you were doing <laughs> <laughs> Until I was rude enough to turn around and say, oh, mate, you want saving here? And then it were, yeah, I'll be back in five minutes. And then didn't come back. So it was like from that point, yeah. Shit out of luck, mate. Bye, no. But just because... Because, you know, 
Well, yeah, that, that kind of thing for me, that kind of attitude with me. If I walk into a dealer's or walk into a shop, walk into anywhere, if I see a dead fish and it's a bit iffy, I, that, that, that for me is that, straight away, done. I will walk around your establishment, I will appreciate it, I will look at the rest of your fish, but I ain't buying shit. That's because to me, I shouldn't see that because the staff should be going around there regular to check to make sure... I know it happens, and I, I know it can't be taken out. That element will never be removed from the environment. Fish die. It's a fact. It, you know, it could have a heart attack, could have whatever, could just be stressed, could just be, you know, end of life, last breath, done. I know it happens, but for me, as a customer, when you walk in and you walk around that environment, that says to me one thing. Somebody in there is not doing the job. Correct. Yeah. You're on the phone. <laughs> if, if you ain't going around and checking it, as a customer, looking at it from it's, a customer's it's more point than, of view, it's more than one doing person doing not doing the job, guys. Oh, yeah, 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 it's yeah. A team There's of people not doing their a job. A team though. of people, mate, yeah. And no. then if you've got if you've got to go chase round someone and then you, you if, if you can see the busy, you can always be respectful of that and wait your turn. But if you can see that that member of staff stood there giving it... Yeah, or chatting to the mates... And, and they ain't interested in approaching you to see if you want to buy some. And you're obviously dropping as many inches as you possibly can. Done. I'm not buying no, but I will walk around your store and I will appreciate it. But It's not even about buying anything for me, though, mate. Sometimes you build a customer relation hoping they'll come back. Exactly. That's the one, mate. And that's the customer relations is key. It always has been. It doesn't matter what line of business you're in. It doesn't matter whether you're selling fish or you're selling cars or you're working as a cosmetic repair engineer. Your customer relations are always key. It takes minutes to get a bad reputation, but it can take a lifetime to get a good one. And it's yeah. easily lost with first reactions from somebody like customer that walks in and think, why would you chuff and ignore in there? My, that, my, my place that we're in Huddersfield, I'd been going there since I was seven or eight year old with my dad. My dad take him in, and I used to go up. And the first thing I'd do is run into Big Vat to have a look at Big Fish. I always used to go up there to have a look at him. That's the first thing I'd ever do. And I carried on going there right up to being buying my first fish for my first pond and my tropical fish for my tank. It took me 20 plus years to be able to get to a point where I could have a conversation with the guy behind the counter because he was as miserable as sin. And I'd watch <laughs> customers literally trying to get his attention and just fucking straight walk out and thinking, you're an ignorant twat. That's God's honest yeah, truth. And I'd, I'd even told him, I've even said it to him, you're a miserable bastard, you. And I thought I were a miserable <laughs> bastard, but I can be a miserable <laughs> bastard, but you beat me hands down, fella. Why do you walk in with a smile on your face? You and must have been bad. <laughs> Man, you were bad, Daz, I'm telling you. I would have loved you to go, I would have loved to have taken you there. Miserable as sin. But when you got to know him, then and only then did you get to see what he should have been showing to everybody his knowledge his information whatever he could have helped you with after that point but that was with perseverance of sticking it out and going and going and going and going and going <laughs> and then eventually it went bust and you can see why yeah there you go but yeah i totally agree kelly 100 percent Terence says lots of dealers sell the uh, same fish. You just have to trust who's got the best eye. Nobody sells the same fish, mate. Every fish is individual. Yeah, but they see the same thing, the same breed. Yeah. <laughs> ANC said it's about uh, progression. Always trying to buy a better koi than the last one. You know, to be fair, I think that's probably right. Mm, I think yeah. you, you, you do go through, buy a koi, and you think, hmm. I like that fish. And then you get that better one, you think. I don't really like that fish anymore now because that one's better. But I've seen one at my <laughs> shop and that one's even better than that. So, yeah, I agree with that one. That is. I, I always see koi that I really like in the shop and cry when they go out. <laughs> see, I always really I see, I see lots of fish that I like in a shop and cry my way out because I can't go home with them. <laughs> okay, as Simon says, it is relative, isn't it? And the thing is, I think a lot of people do progress through the hobby and then hit a point where they change what their aims are. Yeah. You always drive to have the most perfect Sankey show, whatever, when you're going up through and you see these better and better fish, 
And then you get to a point, and actually, you start appreciating different varieties, different body types, different different aspects of koi that you perhaps never even thought of before. So it's not it's not a straight line that everyone follows. There is, yeah, there's a lot of um, deviation and almost a year to year. Yeah, new new varieties come about. Golden corn. You can't you can't you can't look at that in the same way as you look at Kahaku and Sankey. But actually, you can appreciate it and follow a different path and think. Actually, I've been doing this for a long time. I'm going to go down a path and grow jumbo fish. I'm going to go down a path and grow fish that have got the most amazing scalation and appreciate. I'm going to pond out and get maximum growth. A, di a completely different, yeah, a, a, di yeah. a different way of doing stuff. Yeah. And there's no wrong or right, is there? It's just personal preference, mate. That you want to do. <laughs> I've got to give him, Mary. He gets me every week. Simon, my relative, know nothing about fish. <laughs> There's got a one-liner every week, man. It's good. It's oh, got man. a couple in now. He just had my eyes out. <laughs> I've seen a few more further up to yeah. as well. <laughs> Dealers should be friendly. They're happy to answer stupid newbie questions. They should, mate. Because okay, no, no, no. I want to. I want to. I want to interrupt, Gaz. Yeah. One it's... thing that pisses me off is. When people say stupid questions, there's no not, none thing. of them are stupid if you don't know the Absolutely answer. Absolutely not one. The only stupid question, and this is what I tell my staff when they're coming on, the only stupid question is the one that you choose not to ask, because it means you're going to do something that you don't know whether is right or wrong. So you've got to ask every question. If if you need to know an answer because you're unsure, ask it. Ask that question. Yeah. Honestly, I think the biggest thing out of all this is, right, you've got to be approachable because yeah. Crafty knows this because he'll have fucking met him at some point. My dad, <laughs> I tell you now, he's an absolute wealth of knowledge, but to look at him, or if he looked at you, you'd think first thing you'd say is he's going to fucking kill me because he just looks <laughs> like he's got some, he's carrying some angry shit around with him all the time. <laughs> or, he comes across like that sometimes as well. I fucking beat it with a fucking bit of two before, lad. I hope <laughs> he's not watching this because I'll fucking have to meet him tomorrow. But, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, honestly, like he'd say me, he'd look there, and honestly, years at last years at shop, you could ever ask him. They'd walk in and go, Ricky and Ricky and Ryan in, and he'd still be there, like, what? Do you know what I mean? But no one wanted to talk to him because we'd spend the time like with people in a different, younger environment. Yeah, and he stood there looking like he's about to fill you in. Do you know what I mean? But if you actually <laughs> spoke to him and broke it down, and you know, his knowledge was way better than mine and his put, you know, mine and Rick's put together. Mm. But yeah, as an initial. Thing you'd walk behind, see him behind the counter, and think, do you know what? I'll just get in the car and do one. I, I'm actually, not mate, you, you're quite right because uh, your your old man, when I first met him, he was like, oh, you know, you think, fucking hell, grumpy old cat. <laughs> right? However, when when you get to talk to him, right, he, he's, he told me stuff about aquarium time, fucking knowledge on aquarium tanks, absolutely no idea. That's why I got stuff. But it was like, yeah, you just need to do that. Lo and behold, mate, went back, spoke to spoke to the guys in the department. Right, try that. Gone. It's not something you could have found in a textbook anywhere either. You know, and, he's experienced across the board for anybody. Soy, marines, tropicals, cold water fancies, even plant life in a fucking pond. Yeah, keeping a different environment. I've honestly like. I'm not just blowing smoke up his ass because I'm gonna get nothing from it anyway, but I'll probably fuck off. But he, <laughs> he is literally just yeah, can do it all from end to end, and it's mind blowing because I've never had that sort of interest. But he's kept every sort of fish at every sort of level, and it is when you get somebody like that, it's good, you know, even like people want to talk to me, they'll still want to talk to him. And like I have people at Koi shows even now, they'll come and say to me, Is your dad about this weekend? And I'm sort of looking, thinking, what the fuck do you want to go and talk to him for? Yeah, you know I mean, but they, they do because the knowledge is just a different gravy, you know. Your old man, your old man, proper made me chuckle. So he took me at the top of the uh, the patch of the patch of the land that you've got, where he's got them four scrapes dug out. <laughs> <laughs> See these craft? I'm gonna fucking put some koi in here, lad. It's like, all right, he said. But then the fucking plants took out. Do you want, I tell you what, get some of that in a bag. You can sell that down your fucking shop. I said, I don't want to sell any of that. Get some in a fucking bag, lad. I said, like, don't want any, Andy, mate. I said, like, all right, come and have a look at me fish house. So he took me in, you know, look at the fancy goldfish, picks one up, gives it a squeeze, mate. 
eggs like that. Fucking eggs all day, these bastard things. Look at these. Fucking hell, Andy, man. Quality fish, these. It's like, I, I don't know what I'm looking at, man, but I'll take your word for it. it, it Joey, it's even true, now, man. though, even now, though, sometimes, and Obby, and those of fish that I keep, sometimes you need somebody else to bounce off in ideas. And if you've got, say, for an argument upon the fish that are sick, you can't get your head around why they're sick. You've scraped them, you can't find any parasites, but condition's not quite right. He's the first person I would always turn to first to ask. You know, because I can phone him up and say, Dad, got a problem with some fish. This is what's been happening. That's what's been happening. This is right. That's right. And he'll always, that wise old fucker will come to me and he'll say, I'll just see you in 10 minutes. And he'll come fucking in fish out door and he'll say, right. He'll look at him and just go, that's what you need to do with him. Honestly. And that's even my, at my level now, of keeping fish with him for years, he's still got that edge above it. He, honestly, and that, that's always something that you look at and think. Experience, yeah. mate. There you go. Yeah. See, you the world's part, experience. The world's apart, isn't it? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. We're all we're, we're all us for us, us five are shit anyway. It's SOA stands for sense of humour. <laughs> I ain't got them. Who'd have known? Uh, I, I wouldn't have expected. That apparently, that nearly everybody else in the that. audience knew. That it you that. I wouldn't expect that. It's just you know you're either funny well, or you're not. To be to be fair though, I mean it's nice when you can walk in and have a bit of crack, isn't it? Fuck yeah. yeah it it breaks the ice, doesn't it, as well? It's important to me. I couldn't be like a fucking robot at work, mate. You know, they when I first got there, mate, my shot could not believe how I was more like a fucking market trader, you know, having a laugh. Look at you, <laughs> you, you, fat boy, boy. you know what I mean? It's fucking <laughs> you just come out of the cafe having a burger, and they're like, can't say that to customers. Yes, I don't know how you can talk. You're always in cafe eating something. Oh, hey, I'll tell you something else. No, Ryan. I'll tell you something else, mate. You can order the same sandwiches as him, and his comes out twice as big as yours. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, mate. Eight like, slices of bread and knee deep in sausage and bacon. Roger's <laughs> came out, Jeff's came out, Vicky's came out, and then I'm thinking, well, they were all small. Oh, mine's slightly bigger. Mine come out a little bit bigger. I thought, yeah, good on for waiting last. Then he's come out. Well, I, must, I, must, I must have had a, a double portion. So yeah, carry it I'm, out like that. I come out with two <laughs> plates for him. Like that, three maids. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's the job, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah mate. 100%, mate. That's what it's about. There we go. Chris Taylor, thank you very much, mate. Come on, peeps. 41 likes, I don't know, but 144 watching. I don't Good. think my live has, has ever, ever, ever Topped a hundred likes yet. Let's make tonight the night. Come on, let's. really? That's poor. It, it, it is because at the end of the day, we're yeah, here like week out, putting out damn good content. And I shouldn't have to ask for a thumbs up, but if you don't all give it's me a thumbs up, content, guys, right? <laughs> it's the it's panel it. that you've got, dude. Look at the amount of different people that come through your show, dude. There you go. You've seen it here first. It's just but me and the day, the day, I'm. I'm still, I'm, I'm still the channel kind of channel, guys. That gets, that gets thumbs down, even though YouTube have taken them out. People still think it's relative to put the thumbs down. Yeah. Small, narrow-minded dickheads. But you keep giving your thumbs down if you want. That's me, mate. Isn't it? <laughs> sure it's, all, it's all relative, Rick. <laughs> We're trying to switch it off, and I'll keep it in the wrong box. <laughs> is that what it is? It's you. Every video. Damn, I'm trying to get rid of it. Three likes. <laughs> 100. Come on, let's push 100. Thank you very much. Anyway, for I appreciate all those that do. At the end of the day, it only uh, it only goes towards making the channel move further what? forward and uh, pushing it out to a wider audience. So hopefully, we can get more people to come and not give thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Gaz, it's the most liked so far. Congrats to you, mate. You still keep doing what you are doing. It's your channel, is mint. Thank you very much, Chris. You're a star, bud. Thank you. I'll give you a thumbs up for that one, bud. 41 likes, 144 watching. I don't know what we're at now because if I click on refresh, there we go. Gwen's got them in there. That's made up for the last 25 lives that you didn't give us one. Should <laughs> <laughs> get a massive row of them. And do we say, do we always say the other day, if someone were talking about thumbs up and we need to give some thumbs up and I was supposed to put shit loads of them somewhere and I forgot to do it. Yeah. Just right, service, right. huh? I was supposed to put some in somewhere because uh, it was oh. for me. Wasn't it? it was for you, does, wasn't it? Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> anyway, I, 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 service, 
I says my my wife loves it when she just gets the thumbs up. To <laughs> That's it. That was it. <laughs> Estelle I need to send you some thumbs yeah. up. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a bit of that, mate. That's going the wrong way, mate. This is turning. <laughs> <laughs> Look at them all. That's it. Look, we got shit loads. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it. Now then, so that's got that. That was pretty good anyway. That them questions all kind of whittled the way into each other. So this is still relative, Grafter. The Relevant. weather in the south is due to hit 18 degrees. I think we might have actually just pushed that. Um, you said that last week. Did I say no? I think I said it afterwards after the live because he said, Why didn't you mention my question? So oh. With the weather due to in the south to 18 degrees, and I think more relevant this week, which might be pushing across a more broader area, temperatures rising, let's say that, this weekend. What advice does the panel have for feeding? Those water pigs will be looking for food. What is your advice as we're coming out the arse end of winter and into the beginning of spring, as fish are getting more active, they're actively searching, they're demanding more food. How would you go about Introducing your fish from whatever to whatever to whatever. Give them some. Yeah. Give them some. Them. <laughs> but do you just go straight in with switching your feeder back on eight feeds a day as you was doing, or do you slowly yeah. gradually build it up and let your filter system slowly gradually build it up? Yeah. Who's going on to eight feeds a day? <laughs> eight. <laughs> At Eleven degrees. Yeah. <laughs> Someone will, yeah. mate. There's the, That's the, the fish bird. Yeah. You know, the, the bird, you know, oh, I've got an auto feeder, I need to do that. But they, you know, and I'm not saying from anybody in particular, they may have just picked up on the auto feeder sort of jargon that comes across on all the YouTuber channels and stuff, which is perfectly right in the right conditions. But they won't necessarily know that that water is at a temperature where those fish can handle eight, nine ten feeds a day so they think they've got to do it straight from the word go experience again we'll keep coming back to that you know so you know you don't you you introduce a small amount of food and let it grow let them let them eat but monitor your water levels let your filter wake up let it mature up and then use your water levels to or your water parameters to dictate what you can and can't do that's my advice mm. professionally put Thank you very much, Rick. That's really appreciated. <laughs> I do love you, mate. You need to do your hair like you did in the football last week, mate. I'll come back from the last week. <laughs> oh, I haven't showed you this. Look at this. This is what somebody else, my niece, got me. Or my, no. Oh, a ring cam. A halo. <laughs> wow. A, is that what it's called? A ring cam? It's not called a ring yeah. cam. It is a ring cam, oh. mate. Yeah. <laughs> do I look younger? I've got one of these, look, Rick. <laughs> Start with a gas sized portion of work. Oh my God, he's got an umbrella in the front room. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> Mate, is that, what, is that what, it? Is that why the forehead's shining so much? Oh, yeah, <laughs> look at that. What is that? It? I I've been wondering, it. I thought it would glare from the living room. I um, I use yes. it to see how thinning I'm going. I'm, I oh. will look like a mad monk soon, I think. Good evening, Mr. Tate. Oh, here he is, sports yeah. fans. What a shit house. <laughs> <laughs> what a shit house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen to this, though. Alan Tate says, I give mine 20 tabs a day after the panel's advice. <laughs> and like those heroes are growing like weeds, aren't they? <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Alan, <laughs> there you go, Chris. What, what a panel. Uh, Alan, get yourself on, your old cunt. I tell you what, Alan, you'd want to get a pond full of fucking Yamabukis and Tancho's tablets. Jesus. <laughs> Alan, you've got to come on now just to give him some stick for having a go at my favourite fish. Baz, he's too shy, mate. He won't come on here and start giving yeah. it. He's going through his Betamax collection, leaving B. He's, he's, he's alphabeticalising <laughs> them all. Some Geordies, they're full of hot air, aren't they? <laughs> Can he tell what you're seeing, like? <laughs> Why, I'm He's coming. <laughs> he's, going to, he's, going to go, he's going to come back on with something. Alan, next one then. I think that was... So, yeah, basically, careful when you're feeding, guys, because we Just are tempted to bit. wang it in a little bit, bit by bit, increase it, gradually build it up. Don't do what I've done and go out there and wang shitloads on because I've, I've tainted my water and it's brown. It's one of the actually biggest conversations I have with certain people, depending where they're at in hobby. And, again, if they're eating, not eating over winter, like 
if you stay in heated over winter, if you stay in heated over winter at 18 degrees, what are you doing? You know, I'll always say to people like, you know, if you're if you're heated now, guys, at 18 degrees, what are you doing with your fish? Yeah. Are you feeding them, not feeding them? Are you just keeping them warm because you feel like if they go cold, they're not going to be all right? You know, and if you're heated, let's face it, your mind will be heated. Yeah, you might as well be sat at 24, feeding them with an auto Yeah, feed. if you're going to be heated, you might as well be doing it, aren't you? I'd agree yeah. with that too. Because otherwise, no to me... just keeping them lukewarm, is there? So they yeah, have a... Just... You might as well bang them all the way through and keep going. I think yeah, there's, there's a question. There's a question then. If, if you've got people that are heated, that don't feed enough, right, for the water temperature, what is the detrimental effect that it has on a fish? Go like that, don't they? Go skinny, don't they? <laughs> you know, but the, 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 the other end of the scale, isn't it? You know, it's like you've you've got water where a fish is on speed swimming around constantly, constantly, constantly. And they're not getting the energy source. You know, what are they? You're not doing anything good for your fish if you're warming them and not feeding them. You know, so why, the, why would you keep them hot and not feed them? Yeah, because if I can keep mine hot, and I, there's I'll so be, many people I'll do. Feeding. There's so many people do though, because they think it's going to harm yeah. fish, or it's mm -hmm. oh, you know, feeding them every over winter at 18 is not going to be quite right for my area at all, honestly. And like I've said to people before, my two options are this: you're you're eat, you're staying eated on 12 to 14 degrees, and you're not feeding them. You're off at food in terms of you're letting them. You know, depending on what sort of growing season you've had during the summer, you are giving them that rest period and pulling the condition round, but keeping them at a certain temperature at 12, 14 degrees and, and letting them strip back that fat over that winter period to come back into growing season properly when them temperatures are back up. Or you stay constantly, like, you know, a couple of my good clients, they literally, they are all for growing, right? Fucking fish don't have a rest, feed it, in it goes, bam, 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 you know, and they literally don't give a shit. It's 24 degrees, that pond has not dropped before, 24 degrees all year and there is sake flying in that, like it's gone out of fashion, you know, three bags a month. Don't give a shit, and it goes bang and get on with it, you know. But again, again, depends. Like I ask people, what do you want out of the hobby? What are you trying to achieve with your fish? You know, even if you're mad into growing them and you don't care, give a shit what they look like. You know, I've got a customer that's got a pond full of mooges. Yeah, don't give a shit. It's just like, but I want to grow them massive. Yeah, your options are that. There is no choice. Like at Momotero, they're constantly being grown. At Momotero, now you walk down to see Yonza, you're probably rocking on 80, 85, some of the biggest I've seen down there. They could be even bigger, like the frightening. You know, but the biggest thing that I see down there at Momotero is deaths, blowouts, backbones snapping, blowouts underneath because all bodies just gone to shit. You know, their stomachs can't take it anymore and they've had, literally just had enough. They're like, I can't live under this kind of pressure. So what do you want to do? And again, you've got to give certain fish that they, they need a break in a growing season, they need that break, whether it be the winter, a small time period of time. You know, again, we'll go back to conversations. It, you know, this conversation go on and on and on. Where does Benny quality lead to if you're cooking up at 24 all the time every feed? And where, where does your Benny quality last in that? You know, all these things, where does Sumi quality, does it ever have a chance to develop in a, in a you know, being constantly eaten at 24 when it's sat, sat down? You know, all these conversations we have about what's right and what's wrong. But it all comes down, like I'll say to people, what do you want out of the hobby? We have have, because if you're just wanting to let the fish survive, you're not talking <laughs> about physical doing them, that's fine. But if you want to progress from that, then that's a different conversation to have altogether. Again, what diet or food you use and all the rest of it, you know, it's, it's different. I, I like the way you just write and just said, yeah, you, you either eat heat at 24, I agree with that, or you don't eat it. Eat, keep them at 12. And I kind of agree with that. But you're talking about people that have got control as well, aren't you? Mm -hmm. But I suppose any control, it is four degrees for, for, for months on end. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah to someone that can I keep it at 18, it's not ideal, it. but it's better than, yeah. Yeah, but then the they get an auto better. feeder, Rick. But then they get an auto feeder. And, that, yeah. and, and they don't even measure There's out. People, people picking even... an auto feeder up is. Fucking we don't, I don't recommend auto feeders for literally anyone, period, no. unless you're growing fish for growing purposes. Because what's, what's, what's that? You don't what? Don't recommend auto feeders. Why? Why would you not be the one got, that controls well, your I, feed unless I, you're growing get, I've got to get one because my fish are four years behind growth, so I've got to get some in. You've got. You're not going to catch up, mate. 
The temperature what? you've got, your fish are just the 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 aging slower. That's the word we need to use. That's the word. Aging, aging slower, yeah. I'll go with that. So I might basically it's degree day. My grandkids' grandkids. <laughs> so if you're if you're gonna grow them at 30 degrees, they'll grow like crazy. And they'll 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 grow, they'll get skinny and die quicker. That's just life, isn't it? See, I do it's recommend aging for you. Yeah. Huh? See, I do recommend auto feeders. But you 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 you're running a pond. You got massive amounts of filtration. and You got heat. Yeah, of course it's you, got to be. It's got to be through, to the right, at the right the level. Warmer, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, through the warmer months, like for summer for me, when 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 I could be getting some growth on my fish, and I'm at work all day long, and I can't get there to feed them, I can give them one in the morning. I can give them one when I get home. And I can give them one later on in the evening, and I can give them one just before we start turning dust. I can't say give them one, Gus. I just think of it. I should feed them several times throughout the evening. Um, I can't do it through the day because I'm not there. To I'm, not being, I'm not being funny, guys. Right? If, if I can grow a fish, I can grow Nisi to what 55 cm on two feeds a day. Well, I'm just not giving them enough, then, am I? It's it, yeah, but it's to do. It's to do a temp. It's, there's so many other things involved. If you can feed them four times a day and you've got the temperature, you'll still get pretty good growth. Yes, if you if you if you're heated. And you've got that window, then yeah, an auto feeder could give you an extra centimeter or two or whatever. Yeah, but your problem is all, all about temperature. That's all I'm after, though, mate. I'm only I'm only wanting to get a couple of cm, maybe three or four cm throughout the year. That'll do for me. I'm not bothered about. I mean, I like to have a fish with a good amount of fish in there so that I can enjoy fish. And if my all my fish got to you know 45, 50, maybe 55, 60 cm. I've been more than happy with that. I'm not bothered about. I don't. Well, I don't want twelve Labradors swimming around in my back garden pond because <laughs> one, I probably won't be able to afford it. Two, I'd have to upgrade so much more again that she'd cut me throat, and I won't be able to look at enjoying my fish anyway. So I've got to keep practical. I'm not looking to get much more than a couple of cm growth. That's all I really want, just to get a nice couple of, you know, a steady progressive growth. Each season for me, happy days, happy. So, so yeah, th th this is where it all all falls into different scenarios. Every pond's different. Everybody's yeah. scope is different. Everyone's what they want to achieve is different. Expectations you know, are different. Yeah. Tightly, you know, but they've all and they've also got different koi. Some some koi just won't won't go the way that you think they should. Yeah, I've I, got of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got one of them. I got one of them. About that, Nick. <laughs> so I have a lot of time to use an auto feeder just because it's it's fits into the busy lifestyle. You know, there'll be clients that I have that can't get to the pond for two days, and it's just they feed small and often just to regulate the fish, but they're used to consistency, and it works because the fish still progress really well on a small and often basis. You know, and that's the yeah. thing; it has to fit into lifestyle particularly what you want, you know, because a lot of people I see, honestly, they do, they do it at koi shows, it's fucking mental, right? They'll go and say, going to get an auto feeder, good deal on one, boom, un under auto feeder, big 15 kilo sack of food, they go home, they switch it on, and it's going in pond like hell to leather. Oh, yeah. fucking water's gone like shit, parameters are all over the place. Yeah. 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 Just, well, let's just slow up for five minutes and let's just think about what you just said there. It's all about an auto feeders, people. Is let's grow fish fucking massive. It's going to be great. They're going to be like sharks at the end of the year. Lovely. Now, give them, like I'll say to people, especially if you're feeding toes eye, it's like raising a child. Give them four small, regular feeds, consistency. Yeah. You know, but the biggest thing they need with anything with an auto feeder as well to make that pond right is stability in temperature. If you've got temperatures swaying from 20, 16, 18, 15 in a really shit time of year, trust me, you're going to hit problems. It's just not, you've got to it. You have to have that consistency. Yeah. To do all shout at me when I still put a feeder on the side of my pond, yeah? <clears throat> yeah. That's my mantra with it. It's, it's little and often. The, the, that's, the all, that, that's all I'm going to do. Just those three little feeds through the day when I'm not there. Yeah. Because yep. on a weekend, they would be getting it. They would be getting it because I'm there. I but though, be where does your consistency come into it, though? Because when you're feeding fish, but that's a reason. That's my worry, Ryan, because you see, Monday to Friday, they get one in the morning and one in an evening. And then on a weekend, you just can't help yourself, can you? Yeah, it's just <laughs> it's around the pond. You know? But there's no regulation on terms of if you feed them the same amount when you're giving them it, there's not. You, like I say to people, an auto feeder can be controlled in your timings, yeah? 
a, the best one to buy as a starting product for an auto for you to learn off the Evolution Aqua one for me. Yeah. It's a great little unit. It's a good price. Does does quite a, enough feeds for anybody to raise koi with and learn. And it's good controllable. It doesn't, it doesn't, a lot of them have only got a certain amount of food they'll drop. Like if you buy a cheaper model, it might only drop a certain amount of food. So you buy an EA one, yeah, it's solar panel. You can move it around your pond. It not it's back battery operated. Those move it around your pond. You can do all sorts with great feeders for money. Yeah, before you start spending three four hundred pound on one, there's no need. Oh, start no. one and learn from I'm it. From Yorkshire, mate, I and take that from there. But the seriously, <laughs> you start seeing that, and like some people, I'll say, use the auto feeder Monday to Friday. Don't get involved in feeding if you're doing that at a weekend. But then. If you're growing them and you'll see the difference in the fish just on a small regular feed, you know, you set that feeder to one or two seconds and you're doing it through, you know, six, nine, 12, three, six, nine o'clock at night. Yeah. As a, as a basic feeding program and you're feeding it one or two, you will see the difference in your pond and the fish, honestly, within two to three weeks, it'll be astronaut. The change will be unreal, but also be expected to start going through a lot more food. Yeah. Oh, don't yeah. Start yeah. Don't, for anybody that believes that, oh, I just feed 15 kilo every two months, forget it, because that thing will start turning it out. But you'll get excited by the difference you'll see in your fish. But then a lot of people, I've seen it, they'll start building it up, listening. You go through all the advice, all the help, the fish are doing well, and then they'll go, got to stop costing too much money on food. Yeah. What? Then it's like you get to that point, and then it stops, and you think, wow, come on, like, you know, you've got to. Find an happy medium what suits everybody here, but the fish are used to get used to that consistency. Feeding the pond gets used to that, you know. For them to use an auto feed, me guys, like you're saying, there, I want to do three feet and then go and start plowing food in at weekend. You've got to bait it around, probably finishing it earlier every evening, but it, you can do the evening feed yourself. You've got to try yeah. and regulate it somehow. Yeah, that's... otherwise, you get used to that. Un 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 I that want to be able to do. Like one in the morning, obviously, when I come out, before I always go to work, that's the first thing I do is go out, check and make sure everything's all right, make sure everybody, and they get a bit of a feed. That's what I've, that's one thing I've always done. I would like then maybe, you know, a lunchtime feed, mid-afternoon, and then something before I get home, so that when I do get home, you know, maybe an hour and a half, two hours later, I can give them what I would say, go out, check, make sure everything's all right. And then I can have that consistency through a weekend, well, I don't have to stand there giving them a feed, giving them a feed, giving them a feed, giving them a feed. Let the machine do it and see if it makes a difference. See if it makes just that little bit more growth on them. The point where you need to be at. period where it's is, good temperatures. The, the, the bit where you need to be at is actually like I do, right? So my feeding regime, if I'm raising raising koi, starts at 6 o'clock. That's for both myself and Kev. It's The first feed is 6 o'clock on the dot in the morning. It starts at 6 the second feeds nine, the third feeds 12, three, six, nine. You think them koi have got a feed before you've even got out of bed for a lot of people at six o'clock. Bang, yeah. feed has gone off. The fish have already got a snap down. And I then at nine o'clock and make sure I am there at work prior to that. And I can watch that feed. I can see exactly how much food they're taking and what's going off within that environment. You know, yeah. because I need, I need to see that. And to make you sure want to be able to keep your eye on it, make sure that they are actually. Yeah, timing. I want to. Get, I want to see how 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 quick that food's going down in the timing scale. You know, what is it taking? A minute, two minutes, three minutes? Is the food sat on top? The food. You know, does the food increase need to go up? All these type of things. You know, you've got to look at regulating that feeder around what you're seeing as a personal. You know, again, if you want to get home and say, right, like, you want to feed them at five o'clock, work around your timing cycle that you can actually see that feeder go off at five o'clock. Yeah, and so that feeding. you get to see and how they react with it. But all the consistency is by the auto feeder, not by you. Yeah, because I get what you're saying at a weekend. You'll walk down the garden, you'll chuck a bit of food in, you'll go, fantastic, they're all eating. But then it'll be continually. But you don't know how much food they're getting over the weekend. You yeah. know, you might put a kilo in for, for argument's sake because you're just chucking food in and, yeah, they're taking it. But it's coming away from what's happening. You know, if your fish are growing a real gentle progression, putting nice body on and length, and you're going, oh, they look good. But then by the weekend, they look like they've had, you know, Two steak pies and a bit of gravy, and they've got a big fat butt on them because you've been. <laughs> you have got to maintain it consistently throughout. Then you can't you can't do one or the other and and feed whatever you feel like. Wanging not, not, not for me, no. I don't. I don't believe it. It's not. It's not something I would advise. If ever raising quite I don't give a shit if it's a short body or it's a you know an absolute one meter monster. 
there's different ways of feeding fish but if you're using an auto feeder use the auto do not get yourself involved in that that's something for that to do but enjoy it use it and use it purely that yeah 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 you have to happy days next question then uh david put in last week which was hi guys do you think the old-fashioned fmg premix that killed every parasite going in the 80s and 90s has had its day with the parasites like costia and chilla danilla absolutely i don't think anything that's on the shelves now is anything like what it was in the 80s or the 90s no no the only, the only the only products that we use and I will only sell, I don't sell pre-mix shit. I don't, you know, the only the only products that we sell is uh, Columbo. I've had a lot of meeting, I've, I've not I've grown up with the guys there at Columbo. I've had a lot of, you know, discussions with them, and, you know, the money they invest into everything that they do there and the products genuinely do work. They are so, so good at what they do and that's the only things that I'll use apart from, um, you know, I'm ignoring that, Kev. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we we only use Colombo stuff, and it's the only thing we promote and use because it is so good and it's it's worth every penny. The treatments work. You know, I've never known a treatment of theirs not in a certain format. Obviously, job. fluke treatments a bit of a you know any sort of fluke treatment at the moment does it work? Does it not work? But I think, um, but yeah, that stuff's incredible. But yeah, the the pre mixed. The pre-mixed stuff is just an absolute waste of money for anybody that's just tipping your money down and drain with that sort of stuff at the minute. A lot of the treatments, though, now are nowhere near... It. Well, we've, we've, we've brought this up and talked about it before in the past, aren't we? None mm. of them really do what they all say they would do because of EU regulations that made them reduce the amount of stuff that needs to be in them. Yeah, well, they're not as strong. The doses aren't as strong, are they? Yeah. But if you buy, if you buy the neat products, you can use them... At whatever dose the dosage on certain packets now i haven't even had this conversation obviously fluke's been a massive problem in the hobby last year for a lot of people and the, the consistency of having flukes has been out uh, and i've had conversations with people where it's got to the point and i actually tried it myself and i all i'll always try something for recommending doing it and like tech pp for example right people that know me think i'm fucking mad for this but this was something my dad put out as well last year the recommended dose of PP on Cassori's packet is 6.8 gram per 1,000 gallon. Yeah. To anybody that thinks that PP is a dangerous product to use, go to Japan, board a plane, <laughs> go and see them tip PP in a pond with a packet over an airstone and watch the board, you know, watch the water go fucking black. They put that much in, you know, it's serious. I actually used that last year on, on the fish that had flu. And I tried 20 gram per 1,000 on PP. And trust me, it was. The heaviest to cook it to, but it worked. Day one, day two of PP, day three fluke treatment. Honestly, if you have got continual problems and finding problems that are sticking with that, I used that method last year, and trust me, it and a customer that had it. Customers had it for a three month, four month period. This was a guy that's not a customer of mine. I actually heard this story, and obviously knew him. Went and told him my remedy. He used it, and it, it knocked spots off the fish. Honestly, because he. Yeah. That kind of introduces into the treatment, well, into a treatment-related question again from Gary Robson this week. He's put, hi, guys, given the season and a few koi keepers having issues with parasites, myself included, might it be worth doing a discussion on what treatments does what, i.e. PP, FMG, formalin, malachite, prosequazril, <laughs> yeah, that one. Uh, Alprex, claramine tea, hydrogen peroxide, salt, heat for the koi immune system boost to kill parasites and others. Uh, also, what combinations can be used, i.e. PP, if you have hydrogen peroxide or sodium biosulfate on hand to neutralize? And I know a few prefer to use PP prior to fluke treatment. And then you've got, uh, myself included, I found like Vince, that after treating Phil, flukes, costia seems to appear. Why is that and why is that? I understand that you can use formalin if you have salt in your pond. Is there, sorry, I understand that you can't use formalin if you have salt in your pond. Is there a safe level of salt where it can be used? 
Yeah. Thanks. Get me. So three. I know that's a, a broad spectrum. But for yes, example, that's the whole discussion, I, mate. I, I, okay, I, I just want to throw one. But that's a discussion in itself, isn't it? It's something. Yeah, it's PP. Everything. PP I'm, I'm, can pretty much nail everything if you use it spot. to those extents. So is there a need for all those others? Let's just get one thing clear here as, a, as my advice ever. Keep your medicine cupboard to an absolute minimum of what minimum. you need. Yeah. Yeah. There's two peroxide, you've always got to have an hand when using PP. But again, I'm not an advocate of using it. Let the PP run through the system. Yeah. Why are you trying to strip it out for clarity and strip it out after four hours? Yeah, you put yeah. your PP on, let it fucking stay there. What's what's the issue with trying to strip it out? Do you know what I mean? What that, what are you trying that, to achieve? Again, that? right, that's misinformation, like um through lots of people on YouTube, me included some time back, where mm. actually when you read, it's like you must have like a bit of uh, hydrogen peroxide on, on site to, to neutralise it, etc. Mm. However, further on, you're totally right. You let PP run its course. And I've had an argument on this channel actually a few months back where when the, when the PP goes through its treatment, as, as that water browns off, it's actually part of part of the process that eliminates trick out of the out of the water mm. you know but people are seeing that and then hp and uh, hp in it at that point just to bring the clarity the brown the water, you know um mm. which means they're only getting 50 percent of what they're trying but just one point i want to make is the amount of money that people spend on treatments it surprises me how many people aren't willing to pay 50 pound for like koi health books, like really good koi health books that are worth the money in gold, mm. right? So when when questions like this come across on YouTube, by all means, you know, you know, leech off of the information that we can give you, yeah. but always self help. And if you're willing to spend hundred quid on flute treatment, spend fifty quid on a book that spend covers book absolutely bloody it. everything, because yeah. actually you will find that that book will save you so much misinformation because it's coming from real doctors that are, that are tried and tested and know their shit more than anybody including us around on the, the thing is though, Kraft, as well the thing is with pp too many obvious are scared of it but when you look at it on the bigger bigger scope of it using it properly is the cheapest actual treatment yeah. on the market yeah and one thing i said to people as well look at pp as a general treatment right that will tell you also a lot about your physical pond and water quality when you're putting that in there. Totally you put right. the, you introduce PP into that pond. If that's going brown within 30 minutes, you need to be doing something about your water quality because there's something going off there. You know, that should be lasting in your water a lot longer than that sort of time frame and period. You know, and let's face that, it. That also depends on your type of pond as well, though. Yeah. yeah we, we've, we've, got got a lot, we've got a lot of hobbyists that will have. We've got natural ponds, massive ponds with limited yeah. filtration that have got huge organic waste in, in part of the the whole setup and whatever so yeah. as a nice clean koi pond it should be staying you know you put your dose in and it's it's purple for for almost you know 12 24 hours right? yeah. you put that into a a more natural type of pond and it's gone literally in yeah. an hour yeah, because you've got so, so much organic loaded in that pond but the organic load in my pond is sky high. And, you know, again, you're one of the only people, right, that have come on and, and put their name to an increased dose of PP. It's not something that I would do because people we can then, and I, I tell people, you've, you've got to experiment with this because PP, you know, it is the smallest dose oh, on the back of that packet. Okay. You know, and you know, if you increase that PP, like for me, when I put the, the... <laughs> yeah. it's it just one line as he just make me giggle and I can't not laugh at him. But it's true <laughs> for me. I increase my dosage as well, Roy, because if I if I go on a small dose, exactly what you say happens, but mm. it's also understanding what PP does, so you know. I, I always tell my customers, right, you're supposed to follow the dosage instructions on the back. But what I would do is do yeah. a dose of PP on day one, right? Let it run its course because what you're actually then doing is stripping all the organics out of that water that that yeah. PP is fighting against and therefore is not effective against your parasite. 
Right, so when I hear you, I'm actually hearing an echo of me. The next day, when you do another PP treatment, you'll find that your water will stay Ribena colour longer because you've already stripped so much of that organic waste or whatever out of your water, so therefore you're hitting the problem harder, how it should actually be done, rather than constantly topping up and topping up and topping up, because I'm not actually an advocate of that, because I think that's where you can get problems, if, because... Yeah. Again, you're not this, really knowing what your dosage is and how much you're actually doing in the water at that point. Again, this brings us full circle again, though, doesn't it? Again, to what we've already talked about. This is knowledge mm. and experience. A lot of the older generation koi keepers are already doing all this, are already using it and continue to use it throughout the whole hobby of koi keeping. And like, Ryan, this is probably something you learned from your dad, as well as what you've learned from... Yeah. Koi, koi breeders over in Japan by like seeing what they do and what they actually use over there. Keep, you've got to keep it simple. My dad's always said to me, whatever it is, keep it simple. Oh, that's you know, been yeah. my motto from day one. But it <laughs> is, it though. Simple. Literally, my, med my medicine cupboard, I'll tell you now, goes like this. So, Columbo FMC 50, forming Malachite Blue Mix, Alperex, yeah, Lernex, P PP, Chloramine T and Vercon. That's the only things we use. We use Vercon when we're sterilising systems out between shipments, but the rest of that is covered. Every base of everything that we that we need around that farm to make sure that our fish are in the best of health, and that is it. There is no more than that. So you're talking five treatments in effect. That is it. You don't need any more than that. If you're doing any more than that, the basic things there, and they are probably the most cost efficient treatments on the market and the best. Yeah, buying your little bottle of premix gear off a garden centre shelf, go and just chuck it straight off the edge. Because <laughs> <you know, laughs> just go. I mean, the amount of conversations I've had with customers, and I've said I've done. I will not tell somebody go and use that product or go and use this method if I've not done it myself. Yeah, let's get that clear. Because what's the point? I'm not just selling a product. Because oh, by the way, I make good money out of that. Soothes me to keep pushing that stuff because, hey, guess what? I can keep churning it out. But actually, customers keep going back when it ain't working. But uh, the amount of people I've said, this is what I would do. Yeah, PP at 20 gram per thousand. If you don't feel comfortable, make sure peroxide's on hand and don't lob it in and fuck off to work because then you've got yourself a problem. Yeah? Yeah. yeah? Do it when you're around on a weekend or whenever you need to do it, but do it properly. Start first. Water change. you got, you got clean, to take the filter, filter clean. Filters, water change. Treatment, boom. Second day, treatment. After PP's finished, water change. Yeah. Then fluke treatment. Because otherwise, your fluke treatment is pissing it wind if you're not keeping on top of what you're doing as well as that. Yeah. And it literally, but it frustrates me. The amount of people, some people have followed my advice and they said it worked. Yeah, because they were spent hemorrhaging cash on fluke treatments. The amount of people that are coming to me and say, Ryan, you know, I had three people at National, they're not even customers of mine. What would you all think? Right, do this, trust me. Next week, you're, you're in action. You know, you're back in game. They'd come back and you're on grapevine. Oh, we did 10 grand per thousand because we're living life on edge. Yeah, it didn't work. It's not going to. You're wasting yep. your time. That's yeah, right, mate. What are you doing? And if it's been that bad, I've even said to people to the extreme of getting the fish out and PP bath, and if it's that bad, then put them back in and do it that way. Feel what you, you know, you've got to do what you feel comfortable with, obviously. Don't get me wrong. But if you're going to ask for someone's advice, then not take it. And then go back to him and say, Oh, your advice didn't work, but I did it at 10 grand per thousand. I'm going to say, Well, go back and do it. it my fucking advice, was it? Yeah. yeah. You follow a process, but you haven't fucking stuck to the ingredients. I went, well, I went one problem. Problem. People, people are scared yeah. to do it, aren't they? The, the fact yeah, yeah, is, yeah. there's that fear. One he said to me, I said, Use PP, come back. So, well, I use chloramine tea. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good compromise. You know, just yeah, <laughs> we didn't have the same conversation, it, clearly. You, you, there, I mean, I will honestly say that it, for me it is a fear factor. If I could get to see someone do it and watch, I have, I have never, never used it. I've used it for for, for you know giving them a, a PP bath, and I'm comfortable yeah. with that now because I've watched Daz doing it. I'm happy with it, not not worried about it at all. If I'd seen somebody do one, so I can see the process and see it. I mean, yeah, you can watch it on a YouTube video, but you're not getting that full four hour, five hour, six hour. Even if you stood there having a natter, having a few brews while you're doing it, just 
we're doing a PP, but that's a strong enough dose more so than what you probably turn into with pond. Yes, 100%. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Yeah. You feel comfortable we're doing that, though? This is what I'm saying, the crazy science behind how people think about PP. I will go back to a story again because this is knowledge of what I've had before. I was 16, 17, probably something around that time. Marado's pulled a massive harvest in, yeah, all jumbos, 90, 95 cm go sanky. So yeah, everyone's like in dreamland. Yeah, you, all your magazine fish are there. Noggy Osai Grand Champions, you know, you name it, they're coming out of this pond. And I'm thinking, shit, the income bags of salt. And I'm thinking, fucking hell, this is like, you know, you're talking quarter of a ton or more going into this pond. It was a lot. All lined up on side, knife goes across them, stand one, two, three, in it went, piled a lot up on side of wall. Followed by, he comes over, packet in his hand and a bottle of liquid. I thought, fucking hell, here we go. What? He stood over this airstone in this pond. I shit you not, and it's full of fish. You know, let's not even put a value on him because I need to think. He tipped PP like that. Yeah. And I shit you not, the water was just black. I can't, it wasn't even purple. It was black. He put that much of it in. Followed by, I don't know to this day what was in the bottle. But he just literally emptied the... It must have been acro... I don't know what it was. It might have been acrofabbing based or something. Just tipped the whole fucking lot in on top of PP and salt. All in one go and walked away. Shit, man. But that, that's, the breeder, that's the breeder that knows what they're doing against the hobbyists that's scared, shit to scared of their stock. Or whatever. In it? But it shows you how, we, how, how, how active is this sort of treatment. Yeah. They're yeah, we get people, that, we get people that say, I'll put salt in. I say, you got to put six kilos per ton in it. So they'll, they'll get oh, in God. a bit of watering can and go round. And you, they come to us and you just like, say, slit, slit a bag, dump a bag, yeah, in, slit a bag, dump a bag in. And they're like, what are you doing? We'll just put some yeah. salt in. And it's like, well, that's, but that's, that's confidence of dealing with that for your, for your whole life, isn't it? But you it goes back to what you're yeah. doing. Experience, isn't it? They know what they can use and what they can put in and what they can do. Ooh. Honest conversation with a dealer about what's the best way to treat and tackle this problem, you know. Because again, if you start going off or talking to other hobbyists yeah. and other dealers and getting mixed conflict of interest in how people would deal with that situation, you're screwed. Yeah, you you've also doing. got to trust the customer in the fact that when you say, when they say, Oh, my pond's. Six thousand gallons, and you say, well, "Right, you need." Well, we're proving this yeah, one, aren't we? No, this is. This and is then another they thing. come back and go, "Yeah, oh, I did that, and I've got a problem now." And it, it was actually six thousand liters, not six thousand gallons. You have to, you have to make sure that the customer knows yeah. what size their pond is, and we go over again measurements. We we ask for photos or measurements to make sure that they haven't got mixed up between gallons and liters or whatever, because you're screwed when you turn around and say you've got to, you've got to dump four sacks of salt in there 100 kilos of salt and they come yeah, back and they can prop it. it's like well that's not the size you told me is it so but the moral in the story there rick isn't it it's like if if the japs can put so much into a, a bucket and walk away right you, you've got to have a bit more trust in what pp can do you have, but you've also got to know the Japs that A, you know what they're doing, B, have got fresh water, C, can move the fish. It's, it, but you can it's also say it process, about, it? But you can also say it about any treatment. Can you yeah. imagine putting a triple dose of formalin into a pond? Nothing more toxic. Do you know what I mean? If yeah. you get the dosage <laughs> wrong, it's going to turn anything upside down. Well, I'll tell you what, biggest thing away. was I heard as well, there was a treatment on market, a blanket weed treatment, actually, funnily enough. And obviously everyone will just go chucking blanket weed treatment in open because we all get it when obviously the sun starts coming out. It's all great. You know what I mean? We all start chucking blanket weed treatment about like it's no one's business. It's actually more harmful than probably chucking PP in there. A lot of it. Yeah. But it's and that's, sold, it's, that's for killing fish. It should be sold. It's sold as non-harmful to fish or whatever, isn't it? So if a customer reads it, non-harmful, whatever. So you've got to be... <laughs> get it in. Yeah. It's di it is difficult. I think, I think, guys, what you need to do is instead of Koi Appreciation Week, Koi Bug Week, cost you. Well, how do we, I mean, how do we all deal with a particular bug? I, I, I will, I will actually do that because it just so happens that in one of my videos that we've done before in the past, me and Daz have pulled out every single parasite. So we've got slide clips, videos of every one. I'll, I'll, I'll put that together for next week and then put it in and we'll do a talk about how you will do or how you would do what you would treat for this with this at this you know yeah. level what 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 my issues some of the stuff like obviously 
Prazi Quanta was used for flukes a lot. And so flu benzodiazepine was another one. But obviously, it, it generally, if these multiple doses or higher doses, what's the long term effect on, on fish six months, a year down the line? Is it, you know, when you're repeatedly dosing and it's not working and you, you're dosing again and That's again? That's what I was worried about last year, Rick. Because I was tr I were try trying and trying and trying and trying to get rid of them flukes last year. And then it just happened to be two fish. Everything else seemed fine. But two fish, I didn't want to shed them. I didn't want to part with them. Like when you told me, you and you said, you know, salt treat these two. Do that. Do this. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Did it. You, and I thought, you, get a couple, you, you get that in a population of fish. You get one or two that are just so sickly and... Just a pain in the ass. They're the ones that just seem to harbour everything. Have heavy mucus, sit in the corner. So you treat for flukes, you kill the flukes on everything bar that one that sat in the corner looking manky. Yeah. And your problem never really goes away because it just starts again. Yeah. They're the only two though, Rick. I don't know about you that I find. Obviously, everything like Alperex, yes, yeah, stick to the recommended doses, stick, you know, any fluke treatment, stick to recommended doses. The only two that I find are a big topic of conversation has always been PP and chloramine T and what weight you're treating at with those treatments. Again, chloramine T, I've heard people going up to like, you know, 30 grams, 40 grams per thousand, you know, trying to trying to treat at them rates. Same with PP. You know, but I think PP literally puts people on edge. I, I think they're so scared about the thought of PP as a treatment in general. Honestly, I think, obviously me seeing it in at first hand in Japan, never it never put it never put fear up me. It never did because seeing it was frightening. But them two treatments alone have been a massive topic of conversation for a while in terms of what dose you actually treat at with them. Well, these but videos it's out how they work different, now, isn't it? With, with, yeah. uh, PP killing fish, and that, I think that a lot of people have seen those, and that scares people. It's what you it feel is. comfortable with at the end of the day. That's it's it, that's what you know what you feel comfortable with. I think honestly, I think seeing it more and more, a uh, recommended dose on PP, it probably it will work, but Will it actually get you to the solve of the problem without doing it probably once or twice at the recommended dose? I don't know. Do you know what I mean? It's left to be desired. But like I say, last year I was willing to try it and I give it a go. You know, and I, I know other people and other dealers did as well because I was having that conversation with other people, you know, because you've got to try something when I'm not even funny when fluke treatments aren't working for people and you're actually selling that product and getting shit from it as well as a dealer. You've got to look at another option of what to recommend to your people at the end of the day. So I think that's what it comes down to. But I'm not going to tell somebody, oh, yeah, one there. truck. You know, I'm not going to tell yeah. somebody about 20 grams of PP in a pond without trying it myself first because I'd never do it. You know, and I'm, like I say to people, don't go and do it. That's what I would personally do if you're struggling. That You know, if you're struggling to a level, you've had constant fluke for three, four, five months like some people have had last year. You've got to find an alternative to what works. You have to. Yeah. But, but that's the massive difference, though, isn't it? Chloramine, tea and potassium work... They, they, they work completely different with organic loading, whereas formalin, malachite, acroflavin. So Alprex is what malachite and acroflavin is a mix. Yeah. So they work. So it doesn't matter what organic loading you've got with those treatments. They work at a dose rate. Mm. But whereas PP doesn't, chloramine T doesn't. The bleaching agent chloramine T yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It attaches to organic matter. So the more organic matter you got in a pond, the higher dose you got to use to get your result. PP oxidizes. So that well, I mean, I'm not. I'm not telling people to go out there and start chucking 20 grams per thousand out there. Like it's no, really no, that. but that's, that's the thing, isn't it? What I'm saying with them, we, have... you know, formula in the Malachi, Acroflavin, all that. I mean, Acroflavin treated heavy or in the wrong dose is frightening to watch. It's like watching skin burn off a fish, you know, and this yeah. is not something. I think being honest, guys, as well, I think for channel, it's not something that should be an open discussion about what people do and don't do with treatments because it is dangerous talk. You know, I think you've got to be very careful in what that's, that's again it's, it's, it's the experience mate isn't it that's why you if, if you're going to do something and you want to have a go at something that you're struggling to do with let's emphasize the fact that don't anybody go out there and use doses that you aren't familiar mm. with and you no. haven't got somebody there that's experienced with and make yeah. sure that if you're going to do something you're getting solid sound advice <laughs> and you've got someone there to back you up with it because at the end of the mm. day the first comment there, like we've got one in there. So, right. So what you're saying is X amount per X amount of litres and that's someone taking it. So 20 grams per thousand litres running for three days. That's not a statement that Ryan's saying go out and do, guys. 
he's I saying it's a, it's a it's a statement. He's saying <laughs> that he's seen done, and he has witnessed more being used. Not that you should use more. No, but... no, no. I'm not telling people to go and do that at all. Don't start going chucking stuff around tomorrow like it's you know. But no, I've that's seen what I mean. That if you it, see it in if, Japan, if it, the level of treatment in Japan, honestly, even for me as a dealer, I sit there and think I could not do that to my fish. You know, not even weighing anything out for a start, I'd be like, holy shit. You know, yeah. it would it frightens the life out of you genuinely to see what they do out there sometimes. You know, because again, I've never walked around Japan. I'll be honest, never seen a microscope ever. You know, but that's again, everybody's oh, different. Those levels, those levels of concentrate, concentrated stuff that they use they wouldn't need one would they because i mean that would obliterate no, everything everybody's <laughs> system and everybody's pond's different you know your own pond i know my own systems enough to how i want to treat my fish whatever dose i use might be different than somebody else's but i know exactly what's right and what's wrong but i'm saying and i've david, heard, I've heard david uh, Ryan, if you ask a lot of the older generation of koi keepers they've probably used more than those levels in past in years gone by yeah yeah, I mean, this is what I'm saying. Anybody who PP dips the fish are using them sort of levels. If you actually break it down, yeah, to a certain degree, you're actually using them levels of probably roughly, you know, as a bigger stage. So it's madness to say that oh, you can't treat at them levels, but oh, I can do as a PP bath. Like you can't time scale though, isn't it? As well, yeah. so you, you, it is, you dip it and then you put it much shorter time scale, mm. like but, twenty yeah. years. Anything on a packet though, it's got to be the, the safest lowest. It's the safest lowest dose for whatever water. So, Kasuri have to make sure that what it doesn't matter how soft your water is, how clean your water is, that yeah. six grams, a thousand liters is the safest dose you can get away with or whatever. But something like PP is completely. It's, it's the organic loading on a pond to make the PP work. So you 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 I'll can't tell you what, get as well. RO water. Is totally different to someone that's got a mud pond. This is something as well with PP, I find. People actually buy PP, probably not from Kasori. They're actually buying shit that's just online in a packet or a tub. Yeah, yeah. But they are. like yeah. I think they, they use it for medical stuff, don't they? Like PP. Yeah. Why? Well, yeah. You yeah. can't just go and buy that shit. You can't do it. It ends up in a 50-gallon 50, 50 gallon, gallon barrel because <laughs> they got it on eBay <laughs> nice and cheap. Yeah, it's yeah, you know, it's you've got to be very, very careful when medicating with anything, you know, and you've got to take the right structure. If you scrape a fish and it's got, you know, flute, costia, it's got you know, every everything dancing under the sun. Again, before you go deciding between talking to your mates and talking to your dealer and talking to this and then going, Oh, well, I'll just talk to my dealer, he said this, but then Tom Dick and Harry Down Road said different. You've got to think about that structure and that that path that you take on our treating them fish. What's the best possible way to treat all them different problems? The quickest and most efficient time frame you can do without having to keep hemorrhaging money and keep chucking chemical in you know i think it's very difficult because a lot of dealers out there as well will probably just sell you whatever they've got on shelf or whatever they think best at time but you're actually going to get you nowhere you've got to be very careful now you do a lot of stuff with chemicals as well you know but like i say you, you learn what's right and what's wrong and I've, I've, I've never known a year like last year as a dealer where customers had got that much fluke and that many problems continually for a long period of time. It was, that was crazy, you know, to see that it was, it was, yeah. So I think something's again, different regimes or different chemicals have probably got to come out to market to try and help. So I know like last year, I think Cloverleaf released the Parasite Plus, didn't they? I think last year, a lot of people started coming out with good reviews about that, that it killed everything under the sun. Other people were saying I'd never use it again. You know, you get, but it, every different, every chemical is different for other people. You know, you can't, you can't just go off a like what I say works. It don't, you know, or what Rick says or what Crafty says. It, it don't work like that. You know, you've got to go off. Big problem with the flukes is temperature. If you yeah. if you ain't got the right temperature for the right the right chemical that you're using, you, you're screwed. Period. Yeah. <laughs> you're done. Yeah. Since, yeah. Since they banned half of them, you're double screwed. And the biggest so, thing is yeah. people's calculations and stuff. I mean, you look at Alperex, it's very deceiving when you read the label of actually how to treat with that. You know, as well, you've got to be very, very careful on how you look at things. You know, make sure it's gallons, not litres. Make sure it's this, that. You know, make sure you're correcting some treatments a day one, day two. You know, what they'll have, where people have looked at Alperex and they've ended up double dosing and then wiped the pond out because they've not read the instructions properly, you know, and stuff like that. And it's, it's, it's you know, again, KH levels when you're putting chemical in, all that sort of stuff. You've got to look at all them relative things because it's it's 
it's a crazy system of how it all works, to be honest. I think you've got to be very careful with treating fish. That's why the treatments have to be right at the bottom end. So when you pick up the bottle and it says 10 mil per 100 gallons, that's that's safe anywhere. Yeah. Might not work, but it's safe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but it's like the, anything now. It, that's, it, the it, thing, now. Though, it? That, that's the thing. It, safe. If safe don't work, what's chuffing point? Because it might work in some ponds and it might not work in others, but they've got to be safe. Well, it? It it's safe. Safe. I have this, funnily enough. Like, so, 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 like I have this for treatment. Yeah, you look at a treatment, it's on the bare minimum of what they were going to recommend. It's like when, you know, my son's got a nut allergy, right? You look at products now, MS are the worst for this. This is going to be off yeah. topic. But everything says on MS's products, everything says contain nuts. Yeah, everything. Even though when you read the ingredients, it doesn't, everything contains nuts because they don't want to fall on edge of the soil. You know what I mean? But there's the same with chemicals, fish chemicals. They'll give you the bare minimum. Not actually, you could treat at this rate, but this is what we recommend. It's none of that. Not, you know, it's like, that's what we recommend because if it, we don't want no kickback from it. That's, to me, what a lot of it boils down to as well with a lot of companies nowadays. Yeah, but you get your ass sued, didn't you? If you're if you're selling a bar that there was nuts in that in the factory, not in the bar, you, yeah. you know, and he died, you'd be up, you'd be up in arms, wouldn't you? So that's where it comes from. Yeah. There you go, Ginger Pond Keeper. Evening, bud. Uh, been a nurse for thirty-three years, kept pets and other others than fish for forty years, and honestly, the way medicines I use, struck, advised, struck, talked about in the pond stroke koi hobby worries me. Absence of best practice stroke good science. It's true. But the problem is because it's water-based and all water's different, it's a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not like it's a generic body of water you're dealing with for companies to produce a chemical to work to with that. It's, yeah, it's a minefield. Hence the reason why they've got to go to a safe practice mount levels on a wider spectrum so that they're not putting... And, and what happens when you do that with any disease? Literally, what happens with any disease you know that you under-treat, it becomes res resistant to whatever yeah. you're treating with. And that's exactly what basically is happening, isn't it? Prazi quantum with the benzodiazepine with flukes and fish is just kind of, yeah. Well, it's a bit, you, you wipe out Back in years ago, time gone by, was it soup? Was it uh, super burn? People were just super dishing burn. that around. Yeah, people were dishing that around. That sheep dip. Yeah. Yeah. People yeah. using it. It's sheep dip. It's, it's seriously good flukeazide. It is. It will kill flukes like nobody's business. But it's seriously, oh, seriously dangerous with, it, with with fish, mate. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Fucking hell. Like you know, you're on a knife's edge with that sort of treating with that sort of stuff. But that was a general thing. You know, look it's at still used. It's still used by a lot of people, and yeah, it is dodgy. It kill it, if it kills goldfish, but it doesn't kill your koi. You're worried. They're pretty similar. <laughs> I've got <laughs> nils <laughs> <three> there. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's right. It is. It's that that's why it's for me. I mean, yeah. One thing that worries me, Gaz, as I well, these people yeah. that go around actually medicating people's ponds, doing pond delf visits, and we as a company do not do that because I find it completely wrong. Like, you know, there's people I've heard about in horror stories that people are knocking still, they've got barrels of formula and malachite in the back of the vans and they're knocking it up on spot and they've got antibiotics that are just in their van with syringes. You know, stuff like this, it should not even be a thing that if, if, if you're letting these sort of people come and cut, kind of do that to your pond, it's madness for me. Because I just, yeah, unless people it's a get desperate. that's the thing, isn't it? People get, especially with bacterial problems, people get desperate. Yeah. And someone says, I can get some antibiotics for you or whatever, because no one else, the vets don't want to supply it. Where's the farm? What do you do? You can get it, you can go and get. We can send a well, fish go, go get it from it's knock on Nigel at the back of his van, have his glove box, <laughs> been rattling around in there at 24 okay. degrees. Was he's had eater on full blast? On way way way. People will let somebody with no knowledge probably come and inject someone's fish because they think it's doing the rightful thing. But the minute somebody says, Oh, yeah, you know, like, you know, I'm not being funny, somebody could probably put me in firing line now and say, Yeah, you told me to do 20 grams per thousand on PP. You know, that's <laughs> what he's like. <laughs> but, you no, know, it's just the thing is though, but people will let people go and inject people's fish. That's not even a normal thing to even do. Like, you know, but people are not even licensed and getting away with it and doing it and you know, charging a lot of money for that sort of thing as well. It's 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 crazy. 
Yeah. You know, it's, but I it's thought, much... <laughs> Go on, guys. You can understand some people. Well, no, I can't. I can't. No, I won't even say. I, would, I was going to say you can understand some people doing it because they want to save the fish. But you're running a hell of a risk if somebody doesn't even know what they're doing or not got the experience, yeah. and you aren't tested to find out what strain it's got of whatever it is that it's it has got before you even start administrating any form of antibiotics not one antibiotics cures everything does it i mean i know there's a common one that's normally common for most types of that they can get rid of but it's not the case is it there's that many different strains of different forms of bacteria out there you've got to have right stuff yeah. for the right thing to be treating what it is nearly there really, 91 likes. Desperation. <laughs> we're gonna do it you've got, you've got people that have had problems bacterial problems that have gone on for months that obviously they, they, they can send you fish off get it checked you know you've got certain strain of Aeromonas, Pseudomonas, this bacteria, this bacteria, and these antibiotics will work. But mm. you can't get these antibiotics in an injectable source or from anyone, so you're stuck. Can you bring the fish that in? You that type of thing. Yeah. Can, you, can you bring it in and we'll give it a look at and then we'll give it an injection? Can you do that three times for the next three days? But honestly, no, I've got a vet opposite, and he comes to me. <laughs> and he says that at the end of the day, you can find out what antibiotics work, but most of them aren't, like I say, so you can't use most antibiotics in an injectable fashion that you want to use. So if you're trying to feed it to fish, you're screwed. You can't get the right dose into yeah. all the fish. It has to be, you know, injected into the fish. Injected it's a into, multiple yeah. course. Um, and it's not me because you just, you just can't do it. So people get desperate because you can't get rid of those fish. So you either kill them or try and go down a road to try and cure them. Sure, yeah. Even if you cure them, they're still going to probably be carrying the same problem. So, so what? What do you do? That's the issue. There's no. You cull them all and get rid of the problem before it becomes more of a problem and spreads to more of your stock and more of your fish. Get rid, clean, white, bang. Done. But so, yeah. so, you, so your pond of turn, turn the hammer, man. You've got twenty fish in there that are mint. You've got twenty fish in there that got wounds that are developing or got issues. What? So you're going to kill everything in your pond? It's a hard call, mate. I know it's a hard call, mate. I know it is. But I'm a realist. And at the end of the day, I wouldn't want to think, what do I do with those fish? If I cure them and get them right, and they never look right, they never they, they look a bag of rats, right? So they're, they're all scarred. They're all knackered. I can never sit there, look at them fish, and think, I can enjoy them fish now because they're all well. I can't move them on because they could be potential That's the carriers. Problem, isn't it? People do. People, people think... think yeah, exactly. That's the issue. I'm in mean. the local well, river, down the reservoir. If you if you if you're a man of no morals and you think, well, I can make a few quid, get rid of them, and get some new ones in, then you're an ass. And what you should be doing is either keeping those fish till the day they die, or you should be culling those fish and buying the bullet, man, and just getting it done. If 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 you've got fish that are ulcerated and the bottom jaws rotting off, the eyeballs are falling out of the red, and then you've got others that are coming on, and then you've got some that are all right, and you think, right, well, I take all those fish that are all right, and I'll put them in this fat with those other twenty-five fish because I know they're all right. Bang! It's jumped hey, lads. that one, and you're off again. See him over here. Look at Crafty. He's like an auto feeder going off with that yogurt. He's now like some chronic. He's on an eight-second feed. Look at him. I fucking tell you, mate. I sat here minding my own business. Oh, is he a lot? You're all right there, Shag. What you got a bit of mango yogurt going on there or something? I don't know what this one is, lad. I've got um I've just had a mackerel salad. Mackerel salad. A bit of green mackerel salad, salad we're gonna cover it with yogurt. Nice. Soup of mango, isn't it? I, I, didn't cover it. Your life. I, didn't, I didn't cover it. No, no, but you're still it's leaning bad. in your stomach with dairy over top of don't fish. Matter, it all goes in one hole and out another, doesn't it? It does, mate. You're right. Yeah. Well, well, there we go. But yeah, I mean, not a lot of people probably wouldn't agree with that. I know a lot of people would think, yeah, you're a cruel bastard. But I, I guess it's obviously stretching what you do, though, guys, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's what you feel right with it. And that's what. That's how I've been brought up, mate. My, I, I, from day one, when I when I was six year old, I were holding pigeons in my kitchen while my dad plucked out feathers out of the crop, out of the, out of the chest, and give them a local anaesthetic, numbed it all up. And we sat there and we operated on 135 birds while he removed a crop out of them that they'd had from a faulty vaccination that they were given by vet. Yeah. So we sat there and operated on them all. And then we had a pigeon that flew from across channel and it come through. And instead of coming into straight into pigeon loft, it flew through my neighbor's bedroom window. So we went round to go get his pigeon back, like, can I have his bird back? It's in your bedroom. And it got there and it got a broken leg and 
it damaged its wing, but it was only flight feathers that were damaged. So we splintered leg and all that. I've done I've done all that kind of stuff. But then my dad's come and gone like, this one's it a wire on way through, kid. Half its body's hanging off. So we've just done what needed to be done. And that's that's how I've been brought up. It were a case of, you know, that's how it is. If it's got to go, it's got to go. Get it done. Don't make a don't make a fuss over it. Knock it on its head, wring its neck, whatever it is you've got to do. Get rid, get rid of the problem. He went through all that problem with all those those pigeons that he had years and years ago when we operated on them, and he had a bird that had flown across Channel. That was one bird out of the whole job lot that didn't get back until two weeks after race. And my dad just went, "That's it. It's my best bird I've ever bred." It won most races that he'd ever won with. And that day that bird came back, rather than risking potentially infecting all these birds again, he shot it before it even got in the loft. That's rather than risking everything else. It'd be well, kidnapped it, by the local blokes down the road, it, isn't it? It might be ash, but if you'd have took that back in again, it would have been all those fish that would have been running the risk of getting that infection again from that one bird. And as it happens, when we opened bird up to check and see, it had got it and it was more far advanced than any of the birds that we'd operated to remove them all. So, I mean, it's, one of, it's, it's how I've been brought up. If you've got a problem like that, deal with it head on, take bull bite horns and get rid and done. That's it. The horrible cunt. <laughs> that guy enjoys the... serving that sort of gear out. It's it, it, it all about animal, animal welfare. Or a, lot of people, animal. a lot of people, a lot of people's opinions, but I'm a realist. I think if it's if it's gonna if it's for the greater good, it's to be done. Anyway, guys, yeah. there is there is a bit of knowledge. Are we getting? Are we? About time we had a bit of a lighter conversation rather than all this heavy. Yeah, this, this was this was getting a bit deep, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Killing Craft, I think Craft's gonna send them to you. I'm for, I'm for them on now. That's mine. I want, man. Share, I want to share some fruits at Labour from Sakai auction this week, if that's all right. You actually won some. Yeah, this one. I sold it in last Friday. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Look at horrible cunt. Look at the state of that. <laughs> oh, he's off again. You're going to the snack cupboard again, Shag. Yeah. Oh, get some Christmas Get yourself back in there for another chocolate bar. Fucking back door up, lad. It's fucking Baltic out there. <laughs> so these are not actually Sakai fish, guys. These are actually older can fish, uh, but they're exhibited on Sakai auction. Uh, but yeah, I managed to get, I think it was four showers, I think. Look at that. I managed to get, That's which were nice. These are all female, toes eye. Um, which will be staying out there for as a car every year, but yeah, really happy, really it's... to support some fish. What the hell are they videoing them in? That's a weird shaped bowl. It's bad. actually they have like inserts, Rick, that they put it so they don't swim very far. That it's in like a blue plastic, it's actually like a dip tray they use. It's like a blue shallow dip tray, but they actually put bits of um, they put like bits of uh, blue, you can see it's like blue acrylic they put in so it doesn't swim like a chamfered acrylic. Yeah, yeah. Like a sump, so it can't move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like him swimming around very far. <laughs> Have you seen this? But yeah, that was... Uh... The moose can eat. <laughs> 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 Fucking hell, that's all about all day. Is that a... Oh, Dio. B.A. You know what I'm telling don't me? Don't give me that. Right. Shut up. I've been in cafe four times. I haven't worked today, like. That's why I ain't at. So is this? Oh, do you, do you, you've won this fish now, Ryan. Do you, do you sell it now, or do you wait until you see it next year? Or no, that was a fish. That, that was a fish that we actually committed to, but was sold after advertising. So we, we sold that literally within within. That's meant, four, isn't it? Twelve hours. Just got me as well. It's it, to, to, to more traditional style of the show was really nice to actually see from Odakan. I mean, Odakan show was something now that I've been following for a while. Um. You know, and it seems to be the up and coming thing. From what I can see, the demand from there, and I seen these come up and I thought, shit, you know, that these are proper high level. I mean, to enter them into Sakai auction anyway, they've got to be pretty good. But these was, yeah. I mean, you'll see, and again, the four variants we've got of style of show as well as pretty. I mean, Gaz is probably already scanning over it now. Yeah, that's one of them. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. 
completely different level of fish altogether, but just one that struck me straight away. The quirky head pattern actually drew me to it first. I thought that looks, but the rest of it again, technically so good. Obviously, seeing that is is Nissa, you know, will be pretty pretty spectacular. The Benny quality is amazing. Obviously, still got a lot to do on soon, but this is something I find as well. We already can show if they haven't got a lot of heavy sumi out in Japan when they come back, the sumi develops ever so like really really quick. We already can show her as well. Right, question for you, Ryan. Sorry. Yeah. Not worried, not concerned at all about the split peck. Is On it split? One. Is that one? Yeah, no, it's one. not. It's not it split? split. It looks split. But when split. you see it come under, it, it's actually a full. I I thought the same when I seen this. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Sorry. It's yeah. When, when you see it underneath, yeah, it's, you it's see a the clear filament. It looks it. But, uh... well, no, that that one was what I looked at, and I thought, yeah, you know, I mean, again, these are not. They, they want cheap toes. I'm going to be honest with you. They, they are quite expensive fish, but. You know, look at the longer term of what that fish has got to offer as well. I think when the sumi actually develops around it, it's pretty, pretty spectacular. It, the pattern is amazing. Body quality yeah. it is amazing. Yeah, the yeah. skin quality is insane. I can't stop looking at that fin now to see if it is. It's, the it's, weird, it's, it's, it's when the sumi no, runs it, down. It, because when it, right. when it turns like that, it goes with the whole fin. If it was, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be operating independently, wouldn't it? And it's not. Yeah, it's not. That sashi line on that first dan's mint. Oh, it? this this one was the this one was the one. That's better, isn't it? I've heard it's not better, but oh, I don't like that. That That's is a proper, yeah, for sure. Yeah, show with that. Proper I mean, show, yeah. I looked at from the start. The the balance oh. of the the three colours, human quality, the head, body, skin, you name it, just got everything going for it. Loved it. That's it. That sumi over the head's gonna be immense, man, when that comes. Yeah, when you worry only got one eye. I really like that. That was actually sold on a on a customer's request. This one, but it was yeah, that was the one out. The all the old can shows that that cost a few quid. That really impressive. That toes are right, isn't it? They're all toes are yeah. They're well, all. I say they're all they're all toes are. On the last one back there, you could still see its head was still a little bit transparent, couldn't you? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that, that's going to be a banger, isn't it? They're all nice, mate, so far, aren't they? There's not a fault in one of them, is there? Yeah, for sure, though, that is going to be a banger. Like, the balance in the pattern is... Yeah, the bending quality good. and skin quality on his, on his on his shower are just absolutely, like, second to none. You can see the Benny quality there, just in, even on that video, was just right. awesome. Can I ask a question out of you guys? Right, see, this, see this row of scales that he's got there? Is that development still to come in the yeah. Bennett? It's Sashi. Yeah, the Sashi. Sashi yeah. line, yeah, it shows you've got more colour. So that's, the, got, yeah. that's another row of scales that will come up in time. No, colour. No, it'll retract. That no, will retract you, so what you what he's looking at is, this. That, that'll be white. That's not going to come up red, because yeah. otherwise it'd be so That's, that's going to thicken up and the white's going to become more... It'll that's retract. I'm only asking because I, I, I want to know for myself. And mm -hmm. the areas where the black art, where it looks like a blue slate grey underneath, is that coming or going? That's coming. That'll be That's coming yeah. Just want to know yeah. that stuff I've been told in past is really so hard to read though with a lot of fish as well because you'll you'll see a sankey come up in a minute and the sumi on that everyone would say oh it's got a lot of sumi on it but baby sumi especially on sankey is so hard to read and I've seen it at Tanaguchi and Sakai quite a lot. The, the sumi quality is so unpredictable in terms of what it's going to do and where it looks quite heavy on certain places like with that I would like to see that retract but the likelihood is. That would probably retract more into Shiroji there in that area where we're looking at, more so than I would see Sumi thicken up. It would thicken yeah. up a little bit, but that gap between the Sumi and the Bene, to me, I think I see that as being Shiroji overall in terms of in terms of that. Two two younger Sumi to decide where it's going to develop at minute for me. To the end of the day, the best people to ask is the people that go out looking at these and know what they're going to become as they become more of an adult fish. Mm. Yeah, because it's nice to know what is and what isn't, and what you think, and whether or not what you're thinking is right when you get to speak to somebody like yourself. Yeah. yeah this this one I bought is actually a fish that's still for sale. Um, 
this is a big gamble fish, but one that could pay off the most because, again, people yeah. looking at that, I'll read this in a completely different comparison to what I see. I just looked at that straight away. I saw the head shape and the body structure straight away on this fish. I was like, holy shit, look at the mouth and the head on it. Straight away, I was like, this has got, you know, you can see on the, you can see the height of the fish is already coming as toes are there on that video on this, around the shoulder area. Again, the, ben, the benny on this fish is going to be a risk depending on how it grows, because it is going to grow. So whether that Benny's going to stay or go is is going to be to be decided. I'm going to be straight with that, because it's small amounts of Benny. It's on the top of the fish quite a lot. The Benny quality is good. There's no reason why it should disappear, but it's always going to be, I would tell anybody buying that fish, it's going to be, it could be a risk. It's going to be one way or another. Not as it grows, it's going to be based on whether the Benny stays or goes, because that's going to seriously grow that fish. And again, looking at it and to seeing where I can see the sumo developing in between the Benny, you know, and the people would see that sort of show and say, oh, the road is very good. It looks a bit grey. It's all going to be a bit sumo heavy. As you see that fish now, that fish will be seriously good Benny, Shiroji, and balance the sumo in between the Benny. And it will probably carry a lot of sumo, sumo that fish for a show as well. But that was, yeah, going to be a serious one for development, that one. That'd be the sort of, I'd, that, yeah, I'd love to watch the fish like that, Graham, mate. It's my sort of style of fish to buy. I, I just love the toes I've got the highest risk to them. I just love them because they just pay the best reward, honestly. Like, seeing that as a Nissai, how that would look, and I hope to God it does turn out a good Nissai, I can probably come back on this channel at some point and say, look at it, you know, here it is. Yeah. I think it would be, you know, immense because I think people seeing the development, also, as a conversation, people need to see, and I, why I do it a lot is, it builds trust up in the hobbyist with the dealer because if they're seeing them results turning out for me, they understand what I'm saying like now about that fish. Yeah, when I can show it as a Nissan, I can say, look, this is, you know, I didn't sell it. It's for sale now as a Nissan, but look at where it is now. You know, and what I was saying was correct and it builds that trust up in from, you know, dealer to hobbyist as well. And the and the bit that you said there, the Subo, Subo Bene, did you say Subo that? Right? Sumi. Subo Sume. Which Makes bit? it go faster. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. So, what does that mean? So I don't mean the go gets, faster. It's where you get sumi quality that's sat on the white ground, but it's not intruding on the benny as well. So, if you look at that fish, look predominantly, there's no sumi sat on the benny apart from that one shoulder there. So, it's predominantly subo sumi around the fish, and you can see where it's all falling. It will not intrude on them small dans of benny. Look, it's falling all right in between it. It's not the people who sell them. Because I won't be the only one that sat there and asked that question. It's going to be a very, honestly, that as a Nissai is going to be a very, very interesting fish because there's going to be a lot more front end sumo developed around the head and everything as well. It's going to be such a nice fish to watch develop that one. Good black one, white, mate. That's good. It was a good fish. That one, that one piqued Rick's, Rick's interest. It did, mate. I like that. That's the sort of stuff I'd, I'd keep. I love it. Yeah. Well, I say I'd keep I'd keep any of them, mate. If I if I produce fish like that, <laughs> yeah, <I'd keep> that. <laughs> yeah, you'd be an happy man. Jesus, Jesus, amount of money that the honestly these toes I that people think as well that are out there and these are cheap. They're they're, they're far from it, honestly. Like they're in you know if you want the good quality and like follow fish like this, they do they do cost the money. But what you'd pay for that as a toes I now as opposed to a, if that turned out you know as a strong 50 to 55 cm female Nissan in hindsight you're not paying a lot for him nope. <laughs> Marek says he knew Gaz honestly well I mean I, I, don't, I don't mind asking at the end of the day every day is that, that's what I like about doing this because at the end of the day I can learn something from it too which yeah. is that's what it's about if I've learned something sweet and if somebody else has done even better well, these are sold unsexed so you, you, you uh, female these these are all females yeah guaranteed by you Odecan. no i don't say guaranteed but they were females of this date apparently it says on the photos on listing so yeah we'll see how that goes but i mean either way i don't i don't bother about stuff like that i literally it's the least of my worries because i just look at the fish in general i'm you know i'm looking at that fish first thing that you get drawn to with any fish that you should look at is you know head skin and body you know that's yeah. that's what we're looking at first and foremost. every one of them's got the perfect Profile, aren't they? Mm. Patterns your last bit, but obviously um, uh, equally as important. But those other categories have got to fall in suit beforehand. 
that you know that I'll be honest. You look at the other fish; they're all they've all got different qualities to them. You know, when you look at them in general, they're all completely different in their own right. You know, you've got more traditional like with that one. I mean, that's just absolutely absurd. That, but they're all different. You've got one that's really heavy traditional style. That that's a real stripped back kindai. That again, just again outrageous. That, that is man. That one. That's really nice. Again, it'd be an absolute powerhouse as an Isai. You know, looking at the you know looking at the qualities that it's there now. And again, a lot of people have this divide, showers, do you buy them finished, not finished? Uh, you know, what's the right way to buy them? I think with showers is quite a bit of a unpredict, really. I think the biggest, I think that for me, I think they're the hardest of the goats anchor to read. I really do. I think showers are so unpredictable in terms of how they develop. It's, it's, it's crazy. I think everyone will say the same. But they're all, a lot of obvious I deal with as well. Also, look at the skin quality on showers on the head. The old like you know, showers carry a lot of a lot thicker, creamier head sort of colour as well on shower. And that's obviously something that we look at in knowing that they're not carrying it at all. But the skin quality is amazing. Well, they they're not all from the same parents, are they? are from I don't Do know. Some... I don't know it don't it don't say. I just asked what people thought between those one, two, three, or four. We've got a and C, that's number four. Terence, that goes for number three. Jigs for number three. Yeah. Number three is nice. That's nice, Terence. Well, all, there's not a bad one there, mate. I'm just... It's just, I'm just uh, the stuff that I see makes me curious just what people's other... Thought, what, which one they would go for. They're all good in their own right. So that's why I said it's such yeah. an odd... You know, if you're looking for a certain style of show that day when I was looking... You wouldn't I say no thought, to any of them, would you? I, ah, my, sure. my only thought was, you know what, just buy the lot because then we'll learn from it. You know, buy the lot in the terms of the style. Yeah, and we'll, we'll go from there. And that's the easiest way to do it. Out of the four fish then, Rick, uh, sorry, Rick and Ryan and Craft, which would you say is the best learning fish? The best one to learn from? I'll go for number four, mate. Yeah, number four. Number four. Yeah. That one. Come day long. It looks too light on the, the pattern at the minute, but that's going to look amazing when it's bigger. When it's done. Yeah, when that soon comes up. A lot of people would say, oh, Benny's not particularly strong at back end. It looks a bit fragmented. You know, it's got its ifs and buts and doubts, but that's the exciting part of this. It's literally, like I said, for me, I looked at him. I think there were six or seven in total, or eight, or I can't remember how many they put in. It wasn't many, but I thought them four I identified as being the best ones and the styles were so different. I thought, you know what, easiest thing is, like I said, let's buy them all, yeah, and we'll go from there and we'll learn from this experience and keep them all as Azakari. We'll see how they grow, what my thoughts are, and go from there, you know. And that's that's the only, that's the best way to do it for me. You've got, you've got to learn on the job, almost, and that's, again, something new, having the experience, you know, and I look at them and I just think I can learn from every single one of them and what's going to happen in terms of development. And reading that lineage of older can show her. Guys, there should be another couple in there, mate. I might have to if you sent more through. Yeah, have, have a look at that little slide I sent you there. Look, this one. Yeah. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, that, that is nice. Right, so there's some terminology for you, mate, to help your understanding. Ah, nice one. We shall bookmark that one, does. <laughs> and I'll yeah. both of them. Yeah, what's that one the, in the packs? The... Tajimi. Yeah, not Motoguru. It's <laughs> no, Motoguru in a, in a show. Yeah. Tajimi in a, in a... Just think of a Moroccan stew. <laughs> you won't be far <laughs> Yeah, there should be there should be a couple of little cheeky sanky somewhere, guys. Yeah, next yeah. one. No, not that one. We've done that one. We've done that one. There you go. Oh, there you go. Oh. That's up my alley, mate. <laughs> That's up your alley. <laughs> it was up, it was up my alley, Aunt customers' alley. Trust me. It got this one was yeah. It's actually a fourteen. It's only fourteen cm that fish. I think. There, Kev says. You have to have have a vision. You do. 
Very, very true. That's pretty much showing you what it is, though, isn't it? But this is a good chance for your baby zooming thing, right? Well, obviously on this one, the next, the next one more so. Um, if you want to flick that one, guys, for me, this one. This is what I was talking about. So as you'll see on, I don't know if you'll see it. Oh, we had this problem last week, didn't we? It's not going to show you on there, is it? Oh, there you go. Sure. Yeah. You'll see on there. The first reaction of everyone on here now, and expect well, guys, oh, what, too sumi heavy, too sumi heavy. Yeah, everyone who got, yeah, as a Sankey, he's gonna have too much sumi. And I've seen this specifically in Tanaguchi, and I've invested a lot of time and money in learning this and understanding it and looking at development photos at Tanaguchi when he was there because he's got Sankeys that have gone from toes out to you know five, six, seven year old, you know, and the sumi development is, is frightening in the change. You know, honestly, like that soup, that f first block of sumi there, it sat under its skin, and everyone's going, "Oh, that's just going to fill in completely black. It's all going to go up tail end. It's all going to be all over the place." And it's when not that when that fish starts to stretch out at twenty five cm, you're going to see a difference. When you see it at forty cm, you're going to see a considerable amount of difference. When you see it at fifty to fifty five, then you're going to see a huge amount of difference in how that sumi will probably break up. Yeah, how I'm reading yeah, that. Film. Yeah, it looks like it looks to me there like that could have three, three separate pieces. Well, if you go down that side of that fish there, guys, where there's a, there's two bits of sumo towards tail end. There's a bit at the top of its dorsal fin, and there's a bit there. That that will predominantly become a massive area of shiroji there. Me reading into this, yeah, and around them areas, there's gonna be a lot of shiroji and sumo breakup. So you balance the pattern, and the benny will all stay where it is. You've got to read where the sumi is going to actually start developing and changing in that fish, and it will it will change. Honestly, big consolidated amounts of sumi like that as a toes eye will just be a complete dif different fish coming this And it is what they say: it's baby. Exactly, it's baby sumi. It'll, that that baby sumi will drop off, and then it's adult will come back through. It's very very volatile that sort of sumi. It does it. tend to come back though, doesn't it? In the in the we see it all the time, so it's massive when they're young, yeah. shrinks yeah. down almost to nothing, but it does yeah. tend to come back in the same spots. So yeah. the same, not as big, but in the same... Not, yeah, uh, but in the anywhere. areas where it was in smaller development. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will, that's, now. that's the unpredictability of Sankey, why they're so hard to read, but that's, that's one reason why Sankey are up there for me, because... I actually enjoy seeing where they're they are in two years' time. From I've got, to, I've, I've got to admit, if I go back to when I first had a koi pond, Sankeys didn't really do it for me at all. But the more you look into a Sankey, the I think the more appealing than the shower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely change more. You do, yeah, you do change your your appreciation of fish as you progress through the hobby. That's because your knowledge increases, mate. But these, these, things, fish, these fish for me was all more about buying them to learn from it. it wasn't about buying them to sell them, being honest. It wasn't like a you know auction fish and, and sort of so, this sort of quality of fish. It's more of an investment purpose because I've got the fish, you know, and it's the sort of bit that me and Kev invest a lot of time money into in the hobby for us almost as a you know, it, it feeds both sides because this is a massive learning process for me, for everybody to see as well. You know, we'll quite happily as a company commit the money. To fish like that for people to learn off i think it's the big part of it because if you don't if you don't learn it and take the risk like anything you're never going to know and that's the bit uh, for me i would always leave a stone unturned if i didn't think you know what i've got to jump into this two-footed and actually you know like the older can show us for me it's you know buying a batch of fish and bringing them back here raising them is different to like them four fish and having the access to them and just keeping them in japan for years completely different i'm so i'm just watching the way they've done the lighting for the filming that's insane. You watch the shadow on the fish. It's massive. Got them, like, <laughs> got them lights like you, Rick. They use them lights like you. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, they've got spotlight at both sides. <laughs> Boom. So I'm always trying to get decent photos, and it's a nightmare. That's that's corrugated, that's corrugated um, polycarp yeah. that they've put yeah. in at the sides there. Yeah. Mm. And that's stopping a lot of reflection from side at water, isn't it? But it makes one hell of a shadow under the fish. 
crazy how they do it, honestly. Just watching them do it. They're all into these ring lights and stuff now to video it fishing. They've got little like uh, handheld ones they're doing all sorts. Watching them do it, it's crazy. I've just put yeah. you another video across, Gus. I hate it when it does that. Why does it always rock back up to top? Ooh. Was that the one? Yeah. Bottom one. Bottom one. Good... I was going for a wee. That's the same fish, man. No, oh, this oh, one. Happy. We've seen that one. It's I'm not. Sure. We haven't. I couldn't remember if you had or not. This one's Unless twice the time. Yeah. It's my pride and joy. I can't wait to see that come out of the pond this one. The Is that band. yours? Yeah, that was nice. nice. Mate. That is nice. What, assess that one, Roy. Yeah, crazy. The bone is straight away. You thing you get drawn to with that is the fierce. Knock it down, Ryan, or get it cheap. It's not a problem. It won't get cheap. He'll give you it. It's not a problem. It's on house. That's mint, is it? <laughs> now, that, that for me, first thing you got to look at there is body line and edge structure and bone structure. I mean, that, that is bone structure. Your spine yeah. down that middle of that. Yeah, mm. huge. Absolutely huge. Ed's, Ed's quite big. Skin quality is good. It's even got that bit of guinea skin look you can see as well. Good lustrous yeah. skin. Yeah. Shiroge is on point. Sumi's on point. That's well, a young I'm fish too, isn't it? Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty naughty, that. What what what, what age is that craft, eh? It's a Nisai, mate, that. Nisai, yeah. Oh, it was a bit bigger, yeah. Yeah, so that, that's what I bought in NND. It's what opened the door to so many of her... Uh, um purchases for me but when that went in the bowl crafty got his life from (laughs) (laughs) um when when that went in the bowl i it was it was the connection to that fish for me personally i was like whoa everything about it if if i if it's perfect isn't it for for me mate if i was a customer you know and i had the amount of coin that i paid for that i would have paid for it there and then on the spot you know, mm. just everything. It's got a lovely Tancho spot in the right place. The, the balance from the Sumi is there. There's still more to come from it. The power in it was unreal for the for the for you the, know, of the fish as well. And it, it, we could auction that fish right now, and you'd have enough brass to get your pond rendered. <laughs> right now, man, that stayed in um stayed in Japan Azakari. so I can't wait to get to get that fish out and see what difference it's made. You know, that's mm. my that first fish as a Kari, you know. You're a Muji, I I reckon. A fish to put in for your first one. <laughs> <laughs> you horrible bastard, mate. Don't ever hey, say yeah. that. Mate. I'll take it into my Deco collection if spot fucks off anyway. That's right. This is not a buyer. It'll make a nice Beko. It would. But, you know, it would make a nice Beko, actually. You know, <laughs> what, what, how, how much more would the Sumi do on that, Roy, in your, in your opinion, mate? You know, for me, I think with that, with that it's well, quite clear. It's obviously sat. It's not, you know, you're not going to see a lot of a, a change in that. Change, it obviously, yeah. depends what. It also depends what sort of growing season a fish like that has. As in this eye, and indeed, they can achieve huge results there. On past, I've had this eye, you know, go from an average 45, 57 fish to like 65 as a sand eye. So you imagine that. Because the one thing that I'll have, if it's been left as a car, it will have fucking body on it. I mean, it will have fierce body on it. Well, the thing will be Makoto stuck. put it with his collection. Oh my so, god! Yeah, yeah. so you it's going to be a beast, then, isn't it? Yeah, he went into Makoto's best pond, so I'm told. But you know, looking in that pond, it was fucking you horrible. Amazing. Fucker, you mean you're sharing a fucking pond with me in Japan? That's disgusting. Well, mate, it shows we've got good taste. <laughs> All I can say. But, hey, yeah. keep in mind, company pal. I think I've got seven swimming around in there, and they're going to keep me sleepless nights. Nice. We've got to start somewhere, mate. You know what I mean? <laughs> One's better than none. Nah, they, they do have, honestly, if, as well. I think if anyone ever had fish there, or I mean, certainly for you, Rick, if you've not had an ND fish before, you know, put into a breeding program, something I'd look at because the, the Sankey there as well are absolutely fierce. Like, honestly, they're, they're built on another level. They really are. Yeah, My problem is they've got to go down roads with just old school consistency, in you? So, yeah. What do you mean by that, I'd Rick? Say, well, I'd say all our Sankey originated from from Mike at Umay, so it's all Momotero stuff. So, 
you sort of sell yourself down a road and then it's hard to cross back out of it or whatever. I have brought some, I've got some, yeah, it's I have got some doing, I it? we've used, we've used loads of other stuff from the Gatter in the past and the difference in body structure between the Momotero stuff and then the Gatter stuff is just, it's just different level. Cause obviously with the way we grow them is pretty ba bad compared to what they do in Japan. But the difference you see is, yeah, from the bodies, from the Momotero lines are just insane. The so balance of filming in that time, Joe Sankey, sorry, I was just watching then, it was just one bastard tail end, it's fucking unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's but the difference is they're, they're using more and more from the south of Japan, aren't they? Sakai yeah. stuff and Momotero stuff, so it's kind of gone full circle back again. So, yeah, we used to use Sadazo line for our Sankey, and they're, they're pretty little fish, but they just yeah. don't, they just... Yeah, it's just. I think it's like anything, especially in your line of work, it's difficult. Obviously, what's working, what works for you now is hard to change, isn't it? Because so obviously, you get that consistency that producing every year, doing well. The minute you have, you know, and I think a lot of people have got to appreciate in your line of work. If you have a bad spawning, you, you're pretty much fucked. Yeah, we've got limited space as well. Yeah. The we difference is you've got a limited space as well, Rick, haven't you? It's not like you've got acres of water that they have in Japan where they can like produce so many. Yeah, yeah. To be fair, that we did um I had a spare pond. We had used our main one of our main lake we had a cleaned out, so I'd used the new Donichi Donichi male, uh cross a Matsunos, an older Matsunoski female Sankey. We had for like thirty thousand we put in this pond. Not one not not a single keeper. Really? Literally absolutely shocking. And it's just like that's so much. That's so much of revenue gone, hasn't it? Yeah, it was the same thing with NND though. Talking about NND had this year the problem with the NND DK Shiro this year. She not she didn't produce enough numbers. They really struggled and said this year that the problem was they had for them. She was producing mass numbers and they was getting good numbers consistently. All of a sudden, overnight, yeah, they're at the peak in the sales and how things are going for them. Bang, they had like a fifth of the amount of eggs or something that she produced. Like that's well, just crazy for a breeder to just land on that one year when you've got you know the sales at the peak of the power, you know, you're pushing and promoting what you're doing a lot, and then all of a sudden for that to happen, yeah, it's shit. But you know, what can you do? It's unpredictable, isn't it? Like anything. Yeah, I mean, it, well, we're we're pretty we're we're always unpredictable. It is, isn't it? Stuff, it's awesome, isn't it? Yeah. You get a bad set of eggs, male when they milk, it all goes to shit. Yeah. We've got does yeah. I'm still Your here. camera's gone black, mate. Just so you I know. know. He's got naked. Make... <laughs> he sat on it. <laughs> drop out and drop. Come back in again. Yeah. I'll take it out of your pocket. I mean, I was speaking to Fujio yesterday or the day before, um, and he he told me that absolutely every DK Shiro that they kept high high end has completely sold out already, and we're what March. Yeah. So there's no more to buy in Japan at all, you know, and that, that's how our day will get that they'll become to to purchase, you know. So what you see in the UK now is there's no more. So once they're gone, they're gone. Oh, that's lucky. I've one, I've one one off you, and I with my Kahaku. Yeah. Well, um, that's prize. <laughs> I've got. Uh, I've just got something to share with regards to who's doing what. So. I don't know if I can, can I share just, the whole message. Just try dropping off Daz completely and then coming back in, mate. Because it's obviously done something weird with your camera for some reason there. Uh, either that or a sales turn lights off in the living room for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah get out of it. <laughs> Guys, I'm just going to forward you a message. All right, so it, it's to do with a growing show. Uh, Has it been cancelled already? <laughs> far from it, mate. <laughs> Uh, we're, we're actually. Oh, we've actually. Do you want me to share it. this? Yeah, yeah. I want you to share it, mate. Yeah, I've checked over, so it's proof. It's proved. But um, I've been talking to Fujio, um, and what I what I said, he, I've asked him is whether or not he'd be willing to, um, whether or not he'd be willing to judge the grow and show uh, of the DK Shiro. So. Um, you know, good that's morning just... from Japan. 
good to see the show on your shelf. He's on about this show, huh? That he presented to me over there out, out of his collection. Um, he was just asking how that was getting on. Um, but I've been practicing a bit of Japanese writing to him as well, just to own on my skills, you know. To and, and this is basically what he come back with. So um he is more than happy to do um a judge either be a judge or group one of a group of judges. So um one of the prizes that we will run is um the best the best Shiro as he sees it from uh, picture and video footage that will be sent over to him. Um, and no doubt he will do uh, a small video back as well, knowing Fujio. Um, so that I'm, I'm gonna, I think I'll probably get a little trophy for that one um, for whoever wins it. You know, given the fact that the the DK line for me are great; they're a real good koi, um, and and I enjoyed them massively in, personally from the two that I've got. One I bought from Rye actually, um, and. It's going to test people's eye on the day. Um, does, that, does that mean he's seen your show behind you on the shelf? No, no, no. He watches you, Gaz, every it's, week. He watches me, doesn't Religious he? <laughs> did, did, you think he did, you, did you think he'd give me a thumbs up this evening? Thank you very much if you did. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... We, for, for me, I think it's going to be a, a real good test and a real good learning fish for everybody, you know. So I would really hope that anybody that takes part through this channel... Um, See you all know, down there. Does, just, ...does actually send all the information back so we can share the results. And also, it would be good for, you know, Fujio, who, you know, who with... With his other two, uh, what's the third guy called, mate? We've got Makoto and who else, right? Oh, Kobayashi. Kobayashi. So, you know, it'd be nice for them to see what, what you do in your ponds. Um, and I don't want, I don't particularly want just five fish to send him because that's going to be quite embarrassing. So and I need as much support on that as you can. So hopefully we can get more of this sort of thing from Japan going forward. You know, that that's, I mean, I know Rye's done one as well on the, on your Tama Saba Ground show as well, haven't you? Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, so, you know, that for me is really exciting. That's a bit of something else, isn't it? A bit of something different, that, mate. Eh? You know, so no, one else, no, 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 ever, no one else has done that yet. And, you know, it's good. It, it, it's, it's good for everybody. So you get to actually be judged by the person that spawned them. You know, I think that's going to be quite a nice one. And Alan Tate is also going to be judging the UK version no, as well. Stacked him. I haven't, <laughs> mate. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yes, we've actually done it. One hundred likes. Thank you very yeah. much, yeah. 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 everyone. Yeah. Best time ever. We've had hundred likes in. Fucking dogs, man! I just shut the door. And I opened it again. <laughs> <laughs> right. I've got another question on some fish that have been shared as in. <coughs> from OG Pulls 99. I hope I pronounced that right. Probably didn't, but let me uh, stop sharing this and I'll see if I can bring them up because he's posted them in the Discord. Let's see if I can bring these ones up. So where's the TV now, Crafty? It's on the wall now. But after I'd hung it, mate, it don't work now. Fucking I liked it on the breakfast on bench better. 65 inch TV on the breakfast bench. Right. I've, I've got to put the surround back on around the drawers. That's been there for about a year. <laughs> I was hoping Gaz can come down. I know that he's quite a dub under doing was fixing shit. He puts What's up? What are you doing? Show me. I'll tell you if I can fix it. I just want to put my surround back on round my drawers, mate. <laughs> Is that off the drawer from? It's, a, it's off the uh, like pan drawers in the, the kitchen unit. That's a um, new kitchen, mate. Is it fuckers like, man? It's really good <laughs> on there, mate. Done. Oh, shit. Sorry, Daz. My bad, mate. <laughs> I didn't hear the ping. 
Oh, so We've got uh, these ones that have been shared, right? So I'll you know, these gentlemen. I've just been offered. No trifle, mate. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Nice calendar. Nice calendar. <laughs> nice blue calendar. <laughs> it's a good idea. What are we looking at on this, Gus? I don't know. Yes, it's, got, it's, it's got a good, nice, seriously good head on it for a little. <laughs> definitely not one of mine. We definitely like definitely good not, head. Definitely, yeah, definitely not one of yours. We all like a bit of good head, mate. We've got that one. That's the first one. And then the second one. Are these the ones, mate? Am I showing the right ones? <laughs> Just type in head onto Google. The future. Beautiful, <laughs> yellow, beautiful yellow Sanke and yellow Kahaku. Does anyone have any more information on them? I bought them oh, from R&R &R, Koi in Fresco CA. Yellow Kahaku. Oh, shit. Isn't that a Harawaki? No. <laughs> yellow Kahaku. I've heard of blue kahaku. Aaron's got some blue kahaku. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they're, they're non metallic. Yeah, so they are yellow kahaku, aren't they? Mm. <laughs> come on, Ryan, you're out in Japan. Where do they come from? Who's doing yellow kahakus? Rick, I'm not being rude. Can you leave me out of this one? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you need to get in this one. I forgot to put the medication tonight, clearly. <laughs> it's it's not a it's not a thing. No. Wait, uh, Mr. Hadfield, where is it this where is he tonight? He's uh Snowboarding in. Oh yeah, he's gone. He went snowboarding on that. St was it a stag do where he took a place? Oh, yeah. that dropped out. Yeah, I see looking at him. looking at his Instagram, it looks like he's more on the piss than he is skiing. <laughs> you can imagine they, they were imported from Japan. Those. There'd be a video on BBC News, wouldn't they? English man cock out down the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the mosquito will be alive somewhere. Hey, you want to say, hey, you want to get on? We need Alec. Mr. When's Alec coming on? Mr. Tate said there, Golden Khan gone wrong. <laughs> I said to him, Al, come on, son. He's just totally blanked me. Ivan <laughs> Utter has forgot his fucking reading glasses. <laughs> on a serious <laughs> note, the, deal, the dealer's stand, the dealer's show bit at the National. How's that work? In what way? I don't know. What's, <laughs> what's the size limits, numbers of fish? How's it work, Bill? Well, Rick, I think being honest, <laughs> I was having this conversation with Kev about this, funnily enough, with mean, A because we get limited to one fish per size. Yeah, Very yeah. Much, yeah. Many, yeah. many size six fish at all. Yeah? yeah, but they're asking me to commit now to what I'm gonna have around me potentially in July, end of June, July. Yeah, I've got three, four months still of selling to go along by that period. I don't I I couldn't do it last year because I didn't have enough fish to meet the needs of doing it. You know, yeah, I was selling too many fish, yeah, and I can't, I'm not leaving fish behind to do a dealer's show. Oh, there he is, look, Jesus. There he is. <laughs> Told you, more, more drink. There you go. There he is, Mr. Abfield. Oh, yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah. That weren't him, that was just a picture he took. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought it was, is like a fish of each size, up to, yeah. Size five, so one in size one, one in size two, three, four and five. I mean, like, what I, I just I don't see what we can do with that. If I'm being honest with you, I know you can do something, but I can't fill all them size categories for one straight away. I can't do it for two. I don't know if I'm gonna have anything to fill it full stop in June. You know, I might not have. You know, I might completely sold out on this side by June for all I know. You don't know how. You know, you know, like for anybody, the unpredictability is there. You don't know what's gonna you know, what's gonna be around, and I don't. For me as well, if you're getting to catch me competing like I do in Japan. Yeah, I ain't putting a bang average fish in a fucking show that that will not be happening. Yeah, that, if, 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 it's gonna be, if it's gonna be something, no, if it's gonna be something in size one and size six, it's gonna be yeah, 
it's going to probably compete at all Japan at some point as well. That's where I'd be at, but I can't guarantee where I've got, you know what I mean? It's like anything. My best fish at minute at time now, it, you know, like them fish I bought at Sakai auction, I put them out there. You know, if anyone wants to buy them here, they are, boom, three sold. Can't do a lot about it, you know what I mean? I can't guarantee what I'm going to have and what I'm not going to have. I can't. I'm sure you'll have something good enough though, mate, obviously. Oh, no, I would, guys. But what I'm saying is for me, what I would personally want to put into it and the time and effort, I've got to leave the fish completely off sale. But yeah. again, size one then, now, ain't size one in June. So, you know, it's like anything. It's really difficult. I, I could compete, but I could compete with three size fours. Yeah? And that's all I'm going to take is the best three fish I've got. I can't. Yeah. I can take one. The concept yeah. of it is great, but the concept is kind of, you know... In, in a in a judging perspective, yeah. but in a judging yeah. perspective of a uh, you get points as a hobbyist, you get so many points per size per fish, whatever. I can take three size fours as an hobbyist, but as a dealer, oh yeah, you can take one of each. Madness. I just it's not. If we should have the same concept. What we have as a hobbyist should be for the dealer. You get a certain amount of points, certain amount of size. Take what you want. Yeah, that's it. Two meters, two meters of koi per vat. Whatever. Oh, yeah, some some along them like you know. Yeah, it's it's a, 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 got now. Have, have you have they reached out to you, right? Because they haven't me about um, how we would like the competitions run. They did it last year. And don't get wrong. Obviously, dealers took part, and it was a good concept to see. Yeah. I just think again, in terms of where the judging was and how they did it, it made it convenient and less time consuming for them in what they did. Yeah, we've got a judge. <laughs> six or seven fish in each size category, and that's it, yeah? That, to me, it should be judged on the same principles. Alan will be watching, so Alan can put his 10 pennies worth in because he's fucking going to win a minute anyway. I hope so. I hope it does and all. So I tell you now, if I'm me, I'm going to go to Izumiya when I go to Japan, I'm going to buy a fucking size one Yamabuki, size two Yamabuki, size three Yamabuki, size four Yamabuki. <laughs> <laughs> best that in the whole best, but best Yamabuki in show. <laughs> yeah, I think the concept can be worked on really well. I think they've got to just they've got to find tooth comb it. I think they've got to just probably I don't know just put some awards out there you can win at certain sizes and let let the dealers just send what they want. They've controlled it in a way that's really quite difficult because again for me in that environment I've got to also condition them fish all together. Yeah, but I am not taking six fish from six different ponds on show week and only one that. Yeah. You know, because then I've got a problem in terms of the mixing the fish and everything else. Reintegrating them all it. back in again, and then you, yeah. And how many you, fish do you see around that showground who's got a size six fish putting with a size one fish? Seriously, you don't. Probably one. Yeah, because that size one fish is going to be under fucking airstone, shitting its pants. Where it's going to be hiding from the size six. Yeah, you know, it's going to be there. And I just said the, the concept's great, and I because I've obviously discussed it with him when, when it came about, and it was it was great. Something like I said about the People's Choice Award and stuff like that. I want to see, I want to see more from the show in terms of what they can offer. But the dealers thing for me, it's and as well, I think they get they forget, yeah, they did it last year, and I'm not making excuses. But my stand for live fish is fucking massive, it's the least of my priorities to do that. But I will always support it if the concept's right because. It's is a lot more work for me to do, and I, again, I want to do it properly. You know, funny enough, I just looked at social media now. Narita is just literally they're loading the fish for the Wakagoi now, as it stands. The size of the operation, the skill that takes in raising them fish, I just don't want to do it half arsed. I don't do anything half arsed. I just don't want to just like, oh yeah, I'll scrape up that little size one Kawaku there, that little size two Sanky there, and chuck it all together. It's not about that. You know, we're just, and I, you know. Do, do, do most dealers really have like size six, size seven fish just in stock at hand? They don't, you know. Yeah. It's it's quite uh, you know, but, I think but, the concept needs tweaking in a way that dealers and everything and a judging panel or you know, the show organizers they all have a conversation together about it and taking it forward because it is a great idea. And I think obviously, people and spectators last year love seeing it as well, to be honest. I think it was a great idea, yeah. But it just but needs the one fish that I, the one fish that I'd put to the well not put to the side it was for sale but it had to go to the right place um i now can't show because it's it's gone over the limit so i can't even yeah, take yeah. it be. i think yeah, they'll get they'll get somewhere with it i think it's a good idea but i think there's just at the timing they don't appreciate as well pond space all that sort of stuff for a dealer you know like for me i want them six fish in one pond if that's what they stick to now at the minute i need them conditioned properly 
Well, again, what am I supposed to do with that size one mixed in with a size six in a conditioning pond? I'm fucked. This is never going to work. You know, and it's all right saying, no, you can do it. You, I've got to do it on a standard that is acceptable for me and what I'm happy with. And that's why I said last year, I booked to do it. I'm being honest, I booked to do it. I paid them the money for the VAT and I told them to keep the money. And then my VAT was empty last year because... I just said, put the money into Kitty and keep it because I just can't, I can't do it. I don't want to do it if the things aren't right. It's as simple yeah. as that. And for me, I just, last year at that point, I just sold way too many fish. I just thought, you know what? My goodness, I were absolutely hammered. And I thought, I can't produce anything for size four up to size six that's that's strong enough for me. And that was what the main, the VAT would stand around is them three size categories. You know, it's just it's not, not doable. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going. God. I didn't realize you had to put one of each size in. That that was the thing for me. What did me? I just thought, yeah, you know, again, I could have filled a, you could fill a vat with ten size twos. Do you know what I mean? But why? Why is it so limited? You can have one fish per size. I mean that you know, if people got told that at an obvious level, the showground would be fucking empty because they couldn't do it. And a lot of people wouldn't do it, you know. The, t- I, the could, top of- I could go and win all my fish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a chance yet. <laughs> but no, it's a good concept. I'm, I'll back anything. So, like I said, I mean, I grew up doing dealer shows with my dad, and it was honestly fantastic. I'll never forget. Obviously, my dad let us show some of the Garmy fish that he bought one year. It was insane. We've still got the crystal wear for them now. Was, you know, we're having them as kids were great, and that's why I said about the concept. And I live by, you know, when the National was at Newark, that was a big part of the show ring was the dealer section. And it was, you know, in bells and whistles back then, it was great. Do you know what I mean? And a lot of dealers did support it. And it was, but again, there was none of this size controlled environment. It was literally bring your best fish. You know, end of the day, them, them vats for hobbyists and dealers is about showcasing the best fish in the country at the time. And to me, don't give a shit what size they are. Dealers bring five fish. Yeah. Fuck sizes, don't matter. Just bring your best five fish that you've got and you want to put in there, exhibit them, boom, done. It's a good yeah. concept to have and I think it will work. I think it just needs... It, it's true. not... It's literally, it's like 80, 90% of the way there. It just, it, it's the fine tooth comb bit that just needs drawing out. So, but yeah. Just a little I'm bit back. of a tweak to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How many likes are you on, Gaz? 97. Oh, we've done it. Yeah. 101 Was likes. It? I've got showing on my screen. <laughs> 101. We've got we have got one more question, which is to help Carl, uh, the art, art, artistic koi keeper. Is it's, it's a topic on uh, microscopes. Sorry, I missed never, you. He's, he's, he's never owned one. High end. It's on his high end shopping list. Obviously, it's a must, isn't it? You need one. Every yeah. every koi keeper needs one. So yeah. many brands out there. Prices, you know, from the antique shop. Victorian style, the modern, and then budget and all the rest of it. Um, low spend, min, mid spend, etc. etc. I've been looking for one of those with a TV screen, ones at 45 quid. I'm just, am I just wasting my money at that price, or should I buy a cert- save up and buy a certain one? Magnification is minimum, or what is the minimum magnification? Let's answer in that one first. Minimum magnification for a microscope, and then what you want it to go up to. Well, 40, 100, 400, 800, you know. But do you go to 800? No, there's no requirement. No. You can pick up most most things from 100 to 400. See, I like this sort of conversation because to me, I, I could just give me a 40 pound microscope and just fucking use it because they all do the same thing. Exactly. What you're looking for, so. They all do me, do the same thing, don't they? At the end of the day, if you if you're patient enough, even on a cheap ass one, you'll find them if you've got the right magnification. You had to move the mirror. One, <laughs> one bit of advice. The more problems you seem to have with them. One, one bit of advice <laughs> is the platform that your slide sits on. Yeah. What you really want your microscope to be made of metal so it doesn't move because solid it, so that it don't wobble yeah, around when you're actually moving the slide yeah. around it's not moving the slide around like this as you're turning turning the focusing wheels and stuff that bit needs to be solid right you know you, a couple of hundred quid you can get yourself a perfectly good microscope a lot of people go with the apex practitioner i was just gonna say that seems to yeah. probably be one of the most popular doesn't it but 
as, as, as it stated there, a lot of people, as they progress through the hobby, mate, will buy themselves a better microscope. There is lots of practitioners out there that you can pick up at 50, 60, 70 quid. Yeah. And they'll do a perfectly adequate job as long yeah. as it's been reassembled back together, if it's been cleaned and polished up and what have you. You can get a reasonably good microscope out there for 100, 100 quid, 150 I, quid. But I paid, I paid 200 quid for the one that's there under that under that dust thing it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a binocular one it's a binocular one which actually i found really good to use um because it's it stops that level of movement when you're looking at onto the slide especially um, when you're shaking and your hands are giving yeah, it a bit of you. yeah it, it, it's a lot easier on the eye but um i picked it up on a Black Friday deal for fifty eight percent cheaper than what it should have been, so you know, I, I've got exact, isn't it? Fifty eight percent. Yeah, well, I remember it. I remember <laughs> it, mate, because I couldn't believe what price it was, and I know that they inflate prices and bring them down. Yeah, but I then when too. I was looking across other shops, they were at the the price that they said, which was like about four hundred and twenty odd quid. What? But I, yeah, but I picked it up for the same price as an Apex. Fifty-eight percent cheaper. But I picked it up for less than an Apex um, practitioner. Practitioner, yeah. You know, it's so I've got a better it's quality. Because it's it's the, main, the main thing, it's though, Jazz, is using and buying. So the main, can... the main thing is make sure that you've got your lens in the right way around, isn't it, Gals? Yeah. <laughs> 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 not, me, not me. Not me. Not me. I, I, I had, I had one given. Because <clears throat> it didn't, it wasn't good enough. And when I took it apart and give it a good clean to clean the little bits of dust out, I realised that the lens was upside down. So no matter what you look through, you weren't seeing shit. But now it works absolutely perfect and it's banging. So <laughs> it's not. Uh, yeah, I, I, mean, I, 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 I there's, there's know loads of people out there, mate. You can you can pick them on X and out, but. Make sure I, if you I, ever take it apart, you put it back together the right way around, and then it will continue to work, and you won't have to buy a new one and then give one away. Uh, Alan <laughs> asked a question: What about a digital one? Okay, so we use a digital one in the shop. Although the screen is really good on it, um, I find it quite uncomfortable to use because you can't move the actual screen itself. Yeah, so you have to put it on a box, and then your arms are up here. You know it. Over a length of time, it, it gets uncomfortable to use. So, you know, yeah, they're very good. You know, they're easier on the eye, but they are uncomfortable. By far more comfortable is getting your head and eyes into into a, an actual lens to be able to use it in my own personal experience. And, you know, but you, you pick up cost you really quickly on a digital screen. Yeah. Mm. And the only upside with a digital as well, it's easy to send images to people isn't it yeah and that there is that you know but the, the, again it's, it's another one of these market employees that you know somebody says there's a digital one their load their load's better well again you, you may not get on with it yeah you know, it's like because one person's got you don't it don't get as clear a shot in a digital it's one do you the, 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 it's not oh. as crisp as what you get through a proper a proper no. one but no. there is with with uh, for most magnify uh, sorry yeah microscopes you can get a mobile phone cradle, and the cradle will sit on and it goes over top so you can turn your standard one into a digital one just by mounting your mobile on it and then you can just sit back look at your screen as normal and zoom in and out wherever you want move it around and find it and I I, I mess about with mine like that because it's far easier looking through mobile and then I can record what I'm looking at which is how me and Daz managed to get the images of every parasite that we could find when we went go through them all. Yeah. We managed, I think we managed to find pretty much most and pretty much most of each type of little bugs and creepy crawlers in there. Too, with us. A couple of new ones to science as well, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were actually, it, well, that was, we actually knew what it was, but we weren't 100% sure, weren't we? But that was yeah. um, Daphne and White Spot. <clears throat> oh, spot. Yeah, the that one that was creeping cool. around and looked like it got something swirling around inside of it. They looked like a planet. Yeah. <laughs> it did, yeah. They're pretty cool, though, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they do look cool underneath a microscope. When you see all those little billions of stars when they pop, that's <laughs> another <laughs> billion white spot 
Le fish. <laughs> <laughs> My we are she always me. moves the mirror. Oh, <laughs> right then. Well, I think that's the last of the questions that we had on there. Let's just double check and make sure that we didn't have any others on Facebook. I think we've I think we've actually got through last week's and this week's and oh no, Next week's. <laughs> we've, we've got we've got one more. I do believe we've got one more. Um, what size would you say? Um, what size would you worry about the smallest toe site ending up in down your a standard four inch bottom drain? In other words, how small a toe site can you put in your pond without it being sucked up your bottom drain? What would you say your average four inch bottom drain safe size toe site that you could put in there? I'd throw 15 cm fish in, no problem. 15 cm, yeah, piss it, should do it. As long as it's not well, what's the, what's the bottom in gap of a bottom inch bottom drain? Just a you tip of your finger, finger right? tipping it. Yeah. Ten, so ten, you're talking yeah. about you know that much. So any fish that's thicker than that, mate, jobs are good. Flounder. <laughs> <laughs> if it's if if by any chance it's about the si same size as a yellow best uh, yellow breasted newt, don't put it in, mate, because. <laughs> That one goes up a bottom a bottom drain real easy. And inside your pump and makes a horrible noise. Comes out the morning when you're servicing your pump, thinking, well, what the hell's that? That's being chewed up inside my pump. So yeah. the 15 cm, mate, you should be good. Um the other one that we've got there is another one, probably a bot. No, it's not actually. This is not not this is not. This is Nick May. Another probably boring food question, but this in I think this is well worth asking, mate. Um, I'm thinking of using Sakai Kari growth and colour food this summer for the first time. I've got some decent koi of 50 to 70 cm. My concern is most of my koi are six to ten years old and haven't grown much and unheated in the last couple of years. I've just got this feeling I'll be throwing good money away on fish that have reached their growth peak. Any advice appreciated? You've got fish that are growth, 6 to 10 years old, 50 to 70 cm, that haven't grown over the last couple of years. Would you be wasting money by putting food colour, growth and colour food this summer? No, they might, already do really well. they might do really well and they'd be like, shit, why didn't I do that years ago? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm advocating it. We don't sell it, but <laughs> from no, what I've heard about the stuff, it makes everything grow. But our fish of that age, five to six, oh, sorry, six to ten years old, have they already got to the maximum kind of size that they're gonna do? Are you just gonna bulk them up, put some good colour in, no, you're not a good gonna body do that. on them, or will they still get some growth? I mean, I think I think you'll find that you're not really going to see great growth results over a fish of that age, like ten years. Right, but well, what, you, what you will do is you will see a difference in in waste. You will see a difference in the quality of the fish as well. So there's only one way to find out, isn't it? Try it. Try it. Yeah, and we're saying when you think about what they used to do back in Japan when a fir when they used to be entering fish into shows that were ten years old, that taken ten years to get to. 90 cm. Yeah. They're still getting growth and body on them fish, but then but I know the genes and genetic pool is different now to them fish then, but they were still getting growth on them, weren't they? And again, that sort of size of fish, if you're gonna it depends how much you're gonna feed guys as well. Because if you're gonna go in feeding sparing on that sort of size of fish, you can waste the time because you're paying good yeah. money. You've really got to feed it, feed them and feed them good. Feed them feed them right, you know. And again, if that person wants to speak to me more about that, I'll quite happily help them could direct message me. I'll... There you go, Nick. Send him, send Ryan a private message, mate, and he will personally have a chat and a natter and set you up with a feeding regime for said fish. Oh, yeah, and an auto feeder and five hundred kilos. Feeder, yeah. <laughs> 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 it won't actually for that, Rick. No, because like, I think people get this feed with that sort of size of fish as well. That you can just sort of chuck an handful of food into them, and it's great. Bigger fish are a lot harder to maintain just in body fish. Yeah, you, you've really got to be giving them a lot, lot more, haven't you? For you're fighting sort of two battles there because you've got the age bit, but you've also got the size of the fish. And again, it depends if how many he's got. And it, again, it all comes down to objectives. You know, what is he looking to do with by feeding that? Because let's face it, that mix, if you're doing it on a 15 kilo basis, 
now sets you back about just over 400 quid. 30 kilos of food. You know, if you're buying 15 kilos of growth and 15 kilos of colour, it's, well, it's probably more now to, to today's market. Not being funny, it can't be, it's got to be fed in the right way if you're going to go to that sort of level. You know, and it, and it has to be. So, yeah, certainly by all means, just drop me a message and I'll quite happily help out with that one. Artistic Kai Keeper, we've got an example of. Uh... In fact, mate, I shall show you. If you have a look, I'll, I'll, I'll drop you a message too. I'm not I'm not wanting to push me on videos, but we have done a video. That is that is tick. an LCD screen. Yes, what but what is it that's on it? Yeah, and, and that's the question. I'll pick this up off a customer scrape that was bought in. That's a lice. It's not. It's so my it's microscopic, guys. Lice you can oh, is it? you can pick up. Yeah, it's on the end of the microscope. That's <laughs> that's a hundred times, mate. Well, when you look at the rest of the stuff moving around, it doesn't. What the hell is it then? I couldn't answer the question. I couldn't find anything that told me what it was. It increased that your beer, did it, Shag? Does is that? No, it's not a water. It looks like a little beetle, but it's obviously not. Not at that size. It's way too small. I can't even see where it is. It just looks like a black shadow on the thing. Yeah, that's what it looks like to it me. Like on my, I'm legs probably trying a 27 inch monitor. Or yeah, it's, it's got it to me initially. I thought, is it lice? But, but no, there, you, there you go. That's that's the difference between an LCD screen, isn't it? You can see the pixels on the screen because there's not enough detail in there to give you a crisp, clean image mm -hmm. of what it actually is because it's tiny. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, if, if, the, if the increased the pixels on the you would have got a, a more crisp. I mean, I know you could probably buy a more expensive one and get a better view panel on it, but it does look like it's got legs. It, it, it does. It did have legs and right. individually, and you could see them moving about. And it also like looked like it had had like a little set of jaws on the top. Yeah, uh, and, I'm it just, mm. and I thought it's immediately, just... is this lice? But it's not. It, it really yeah. won't because it's so small. The lice are very flat. It's too yeah. well developed. Arg Argulus fish fish lice. Mm. It's totally different. You know, just I just couldn't. I've never mm. seen it before in a fish scrape, and probably never see it again. To be perfect, yeah. it, it's not. It's not. A, it's, it's, that's just a normal. It's probably it's, it's oh, crap. Yeah. It's enough. It's not. Probably not a not price not, crap, is it? It might. It might yeah. not be even. <laughs> You know what I mean? Just, some, of that, some of that lives in your everyday pond. That's do not yeah. do any harm, but it's hitching a ride but, on a kite. But it's but it certainly throws the question marks around in your brain, and you you know again, it's one of them where you go, "Fuck me, what is this? What am I playing with? This guy's got dead fish in his pond, or ill fish, you know." And then, well, there you go. I mean, that could be something that's breaking down dead fish. Yeah, for you, again, you know, that that's the thing. It's yeah. another one of them. It's like, what is it? Well, have a Google. I'll have a Google and see what I can find, Crafter. Yeah, you'll probably see a better image on your phone anyway, mate. To be perfectly honest. Yeah. Because it'd be smaller. Well, on that note, then, ladies and gents, that is the end of this week's questions. If anybody else has got anything else that they were temperature question temperature. Well, in here it's about twenty-one degrees. <laughs> <laughs> is Tony? Do you think he's been asking questions all night and you've been ignoring him? Again. 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 I haven't. I haven't. I haven't. Yes, I again. I haven't. Well, has he told you about me ignoring his questions? Yeah. Every time I see him. <laughs> <laughs> Simply stunning. That's not a question. It's a statement. No, there's, there, there, is, there is no. I have missed out. I have a Tony. If I have. I apologise. Uh, temperature. He's probably talking about, oh, uh, I know what he's talking about, health issues. We were saying about disease problems. Temperature is probably the biggest thing yeah. that causes problems. That Well, we can't, we can control. We don't control, generally. Uh, I 
I think Ryan's bidding on more fish over there. He's proper engrossed, isn't he? <laughs> oh, there's a good sanky there. Just another pound. Can't tell you that. <laughs> Never like sharing his fucking secret, wouldn't it? <laughs> now, I come across, and I, I, Gaz, can I share this? I don't know if I can share it with you. Um, let me take it. Legal. You can share it out with me, mate. Do you no, want it public? Um, it might be better to stop the live. No, no. <laughs> it's like that. Right, Gaz, so I come across a very good um, YouTube channel from a guy that does or write or has written one of the best um, boy health books. It's not extremely great to watch, but to listen to. Um, he know, this guy knows his shit. It's Dr. You know Eric. What asked him. I see, yeah. Right. And Fish then, disease, symptoms and cures. Right, but there's 20 steps in here. And, and this this guy has written uh, the Koi Doctor book that a lot of Koi hobbyists buy, and it's quite a good go-to manual. So... Um, if you if you've not, I mean, you can clearly see just by the amount of views that it's had that it's not well known out there, and that's because the the YouTube video is him a lot of the time sat behind the wheel of a car driving and talking. So, but uh, if you listen to what he says in it, his, his knowledge is is un well, it's an an um, challenge really because he actually written a book, volume two is on now and. It's the book itself is black and white, including the pictures. So, what's um, the name of his channel, bud? Um, well, I put I just put in fish diseases, um, into YouTube, and this popped up. So, you can see it there fish diseases and symptoms and cure. You know, let me see if it comes up if I go back on it. Bear with me. Um, me I don't think blokes can multitask it, everyone's multitasking left, right, and center. Yeah, I am. I'm eating Chris while watching. Yeah, you're eating. <laughs> right at the Crafty is <laughs> YouTubing. I'm going to have to get another beer or something, mate. <laughs> oh, blimey. It's all going off now. Right, see if I can find it so I can share it for people to have a have a, have a nosy up. Hang on. Let, let me send... Let me send... I can send that, can't I, like this to you? Send link. Yeah. I'm thinking that I'm on the chat because it always blocks it out if you try and do anything on the chat. I feel like I'm in a love triangle here. I've got to go and get a beer, man. <laughs> there we go. That is his channel, isn't it? That That's a playlist on his channel. Yeah. All right, so if we go there. That's the one. There we go. Dr. Get Eric that. Johnson. Get that. Do that. Stick that in there. Post that there. Bob's your uncle. Have a check out of that channel, guys. That might give everybody a good deal of help. Fish diseases, symptoms and cures. Dr. Eric Johnson. Yeah. And, it, and he is an author of an extremely good book as well for, for Koi. 2.5... K subscribers with 71 videos. So that's one well worth banging in there. Yeah. For all those that were just wondering then, the little star in the top one is so you can bookmark it and you can always find it again and again and again. You're a wealth of knowledge there, uh, Gaz. Thank you very much, mate. No worries, my friend. Credit I'll enjoy watching too. that myself. Nothing else. <clears throat> I see you show and picked up Saturday, sent it on your message. They're on your video, mate. They're uh, the fish are on your YouTube channel. Check out Lebo's Koi Pond on YouTube, guys, because he's got some new show, some new Hiatsuris and some new Kiatsuris that he picked up from Wakefield Koi uh, last Saturday. And that is that. Ladies and gents, look at that fat bastard fucking family packet. That 
How dare you even <laughs> fucking talk about him about food? You I, I, I think I <laughs> think you've seen that them and mentioned it. on them. <laughs> Mate, what we've seen you on three courses tonight. <laughs> three? Yeah, <laughs> but more than bloody three. He went oh, back right. in, did you not see how many he went back into the kitchen five times? He had a family sized yogurt for his dessert. <laughs> Family size trifles, you smashed that. You just yeah. nailed it and it was gone. <laughs> Family size yogurt and big hands looks little. He had a macro salad that were never ending. You went missing for about half an hour. Macro salad. <laughs> oh, right. Uh, it's, un it's uncalled for. Temperatures for temperatures for required for feeding Sakai Kari growth. Uh, 22 degrees off the top of my head. 22 or, 22 or above, isn't it? Yeah, off the top of my head. Tony, you got a heat pump now. Just wind it up. That's it, mate. Get it wound up to 24 no, no, degrees. No. And feed, Highly. feed, feed. Yeah. A bit like you, Craft. I've heard the old koi cast going out of business, mate. You ate it. <laughs> oh. Ouch. Top Jagger oh, says, yeah. Rick... What's the four varieties that have just been released? I get mine delivered Wednesday. I don't know. <laughs> hey, you're gonna clip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Of course, I do. Oh, um, um, show her. <laughs> It'll be a surprise. <laughs> it's a surprise. Can I <laughs> can, I, can I share? Can I say how about I fact I don't even know why I'm asking because I'm gonna do it anyway. Show uh Yumeo, Nishiki, Kahaku. Oh yeah, maybe some yeah, Kinhi at Suri. Kinki at Suri. Kinhi at Suri, yeah. Kinki. Kinhi. Yeah, well they're 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 a bit of a weird cross again. <laughs> <laughs> Hybrid. Are these the Deutsch Ginrin Key He Utsuri some, mix yeah. plus others? Yeah, some of them in there. Did I put one? No, I only sent you sent you one, didn't I? No, 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 no. I'm just going to uh I'm just going to share. What are you sharing? These Ooh. oh yeah. Oh, I've got a bit of fish in oh, my face. You look nice there. Guys, nice. that fella got on your cheek. It's a leech. <laughs> A bit, a, bit of fish, a bit of fish shit. You know when it's a real farmer because I got a leech on my face. We'll have a look at you again in the middle. It'll be about that big, full of blood. Yeah. There you go. Right, isn't he? Don't mind them, oh, mate. Nice. And can I can I show the one? Can I show the other one? You can show what you like, mate. I don't know. I don't know. How you what got that video? Are you in <laughs> well, that's, that's off your channel. That's all. That's on your channel. Look, oh, yeah, New Forest Coy. I'm just sharing stuff on Rick's channel. I didn't even know we're out there. But there what I will say right. is, Rick, your your new polytunnel looks fucking mint. Does it? Yeah, man. Thanks on the camera, man. It's let's what, let's share this one. What was you doing the other day when I when I was you, you was on a live, but you was trying to catch Dainichi toes or something. Was that? It? Look, uh, look at that one. What's that? There we go. Look at Man. this. Doit skin ring. Kin show of that one, isn't it? There you go. Apple slice. <laughs> Apple slice. Is that what you fancy for dessert, Shag? <laughs> oh, <mate. Yeah. laughs> you really don't food. stop drinking a food. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nearly midnight now. Look, fucking getting ready to book my queen one in a minute. Unbelievable. We had the electrician in. It was all shut down today. He condemned all my plugs. <laughs> Literally. I would have fucking surfed him out, mate. Get the fuck. <laughs> and that one is mine. Ah, uh, right. Okay. Well, and he goes to the Munger Pond. The pool. That's not Gone. a problem. Squash and he goes to the Munger Pond. So it's going to be oh, massive. Hopefully. It's got to be done, isn't it? That's mint, that man. Well done, mate. Well done. Mm. I give away all my fish, mate, to be honest. Yeah, it's pre warning. If it's less than 15 cm, it's up your bottom drain. It's bottom drain fodder. <laughs> <laughs> Gaz ain't got a bottom drain. He has. <laughs> <laughs> but it's retro. Hang on a minute. You've got <laughs> a bottle of fucking gear now. Tell that to the newt. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell that from the new that we're in my fucking pump at the weekend. Like that. <laughs> 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 Pretty much how it looked as well. Right, so guys, who was going to use colour and growth? Sakai Kari Honey to may have a problem. Mm, there you go. If you're not actually, yeah, that's a, a very mm. uh, yes. If you're not heated, then that gentleman is going to have a problem because they shouldn't be using it in those temperatures anyway. It would just be a waste of time, waste of money. Yeah. Go to balance. That's why. That's why Tony turned around and said temperature, because if he's not at the temperature, yeah. Go to balance instead, and then you can or, keep or buy a fucking heat pump. Yeah. That's probably, that makes to be honest, that's probably cheaper than Sakai Hikari food. <laughs> <laughs> it probably is. <laughs> What's the best way of feeding your fish? Buy a heat pump. <laughs> <laughs> fish are warm, but they're not being fed. <laughs> they can nibble the algae around the sides while they grow. <laughs> yeah, don't put your heat pump in your pond. It don't work that way. <laughs> so on that one, then, guys, that's it this evening. We are done. We've pushed up to four hour mark, and now nearly again. I'm surprised. We've still got ninety four people. So massive thank you for everybody. Now let's have a quick refresh. Let's see what we got to. We got up to. 104 likes, that's the most likes we've ever had. So well thank done. you very much, everybody. That's give us a thumbs up and help share the love a little bit. Hopefully, fingers crossed, everybody's learned a little bit this evening, because I certainly have. Yeah, me too. Thank you very all much right. to all of you for joining again this evening. Thank you very much for everybody that put in yeah. the questions and keep doing each week in, week out. Usual thing, guys. If you're enjoying this kind of content, do us a huge favour. Like, share and subscribe. <laughs> Tell a friend. <laughs> I'm all cry, crying faces. Cracking evening <laughs> from uh, Chasing Kai. Thank you very much, mate. And hopefully, all right. Hooray! You got it. I was going to have to come on and explain. It would have been far easier if you just explained, and then we would have known exactly what you were talking about when we took the first goal. <laughs> but yeah, thank you very much, guys. See you all in the next one. Keep smiling. I'll catch you next time. Cheers, all. Cricket bat. <laughs> <laughs>